Hello, welcome back. Another Saturday, another Racing Post live with the Betfair Exchange. Betfair's big day of the year. Over the jumps, we'll be going up for the Grade 1 action. What a race it is. Three o'clock, the Betfair chase all the way up at Haydock. Myself, Dave Orson, delighted to be back with you. Whether you're watching on YouTube, get in, like the stream, subscribe as well. Facebook Live, welcome. Great to have you along. We're going to have such a crack this afternoon. Hashtag RP Live if you want to get involved on Twitter as well. Get these social media comments in. You know we love these. The questions for the panellists. Who have we got on for you? Oh, it's an experimentation on the panel this afternoon. Let's put it that way. Paul Keeley's back wearing a big smile. Yeah, yeah. And I'm looking forward to it. Uh, listen, I've got to do an awful lot better than I did on Sunday. I was going to get this absolutely. out of the way. You actually said to me you were miserable come the end of it. Oh, I don't know, did anyone anyway, else pick um, up on that? I, I had an absolute horror show. And you, when you, you know when you go racing uh, and you go with your mate, and he backs all the winners, and you back none. It was a bit like that, because Barry Orr didn't get a single thing wrong. Yeah, uh, And everything I did finished out the back of the TV. So yeah. I've got to do better this week. Barry Orr is up at Haydock. We, if we've got time, we've got eight races for you this afternoon. Dick and fast. No, that's how you love it. Uh, and we'll, we'll be giving you real-time analysis, reaction, dictated to by the racing. He's up at Haydock. So it's the first time he's been allowed back on the track in 2020. I wonder if he does like a foreign legion. And doesn't sort of come back. He was chomping at the bit, bit a little bit. They've also let Ross Briley, would you believe, out of uh, uh, out of Yorkshire. He's back in the studio, Ross. They've, they've made it very difficult, if I'm honest. Um, they? They've, they've cancelled my usual train. I think that was yeah. the ploy. I assume it was just to stop me getting down here, but I managed to get to Sheffield and sneak onto another one. So you've come back right. to your portal, and uh, it's the first time you've worked with Paul, so this is where the yep. experimentation is. Absolutely. Who knows how we're going to cook up? And like I said, what a pleasure. I mean, you know, what a pleasure it is to, to speak to someone other than my partner. I mean, I love it to bits, but I never thought I'd be so happy to see you been guys. Because we have been getting close. That, that's <laughs> it, yeah. You've got two machines there, Ross. What's that all about? Uh, I've opened a, uh, a Dixon's in the corner. <laughs> I've, got, uh, yeah. <laughs> I've got an Amazon warehouse. Riley there, World. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've got. Uh, I'll be doing. I'm, I'm on. I'm on betfair duty for for today, so I'll be I'll be placing the the bets. But um, everything I everything I've ever <laughs> known about horse racing is in this laptop. So I needed this one as well. So and you'll uh, be sharing some commentaries up with myself and my kills to do not? one, mightn't we? And um, well, one of you can take over when I cook it up halfway <laughs> through. Obviously, we'll be waiting in the wings. Don't worry about. It. You can also hear waiting in the wings. You will learn all about the exchange today. That's what it's about. We're going to show off the exchange. Loads of different ways to get involved. Don't forget before I hand over to our betfair rep. This is safer gambling week. Don't have to play in every race. If you just want to enjoy the sport, this is the best place to do it because you're going <laughs> to you're going to watch us react to every single race. So Barry Orr is on track. Who have we got coming back for a second Saturday in the row? It's only Alan Conway. Dave, how are you? I'm absolutely buzzing. It's a great day. You must be absolutely buzzing as well, Alan. This is the company's big day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a proper card, isn't it? The, the weather might be miserable up there, but it's, um, the racing will definitely warm us up. And, and what a what a treat we have in, in store for the Betfair chase. Might, yeah. might be five runners, but what, what a five. And um, yeah, no, can't wait to get stuck in. And as a treat for our Betfair customers, there's a free five euro or five pound bet on the Betfair chase. So make sure to get involved in that. And hopefully we can steer steer the listeners and viewers to a few winners this afternoon. Yeah, you, you 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 certainly did that last Saturday, Alan. I know you like to put your money where your mouth is, so that'll be interesting. There are small fields, as Alan alluded to there, five in the Betfair chase. Ascot as well. We're kicking off with the Farmer, the Novice Chase. We've got Keeley's favourite horse in that, Imperial <laughs> Aura. Everyone will be loving it. Oh, that could be a good watch, couldn't it? Let's face it. Oh, yeah. Well, we love Imperial Aura. He's going to be a massive favourite at Cheltenham. He's got, what he's got is he now? 13 to 8-ish? Yeah, he's 13 to 8. I wouldn't be backing him at 13 to 8, to be honest. I think he's, he's got his work cut out. I want to see him win, because I, I hope to. I hope he's going to prove a proper grade one horse. But yeah. he needs to do so. You know, he, He's the lowest rated horse in the race and his favourite. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm with him today because I think he, he will take that next step. It's a race that's been won by Sear Name. If you remember, beat Altior in the race last year. Masterminders won it a couple of times. Top notchers win this race, Ross, don't they? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, I mean, like you said, it is a bit topsy-turvy market-wise, but in theory, it should be run perfectly to suit him. You know, he should get something to chase, uh, probably in the shape of Black Corton, but Real Steel's got a history of getting up there as well and, uh, and getting on with it. So, uh, and I was hugely impressed with the way... He jumped at Carlisle, another really good, yeah, uh, a really good novice chase at Carlisle. They, they, Carl, I don't, still doesn't get the credit it deserves for the for the proving ground. I think it um, it often turns out to be for decent horses. So yeah, exciting horse to watch. It is a bit frustrating because you do want to see 
you, you want to see nine, ten, eleven runner fields. You want to see horses taking that step up and taking their chance in the in the, in the bigger gra graded races. But that's just the jump season at this time of year, isn't it? Yeah. It's always like this. Yeah, fair enough. And uh, we've also got the uh, the Ascot hurdle, haven't we? Kills and three runners in that. Three runners. Yeah, that's poor. I mean, obviously we were hoping to see Goshen come out, and obviously he's uh, he must have had some sort of minor problem. I can't remember. I didn't see what exactly the reason he said. They're mounting up, aren't they? Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, you've got to worry about Goshen. He's got to come out at some point. I mean, you know, it, this is two mile, three furlong, and you think, well, you know, maybe it's a, you know, it's it's a not a two mile race, but six champion hurdle winners have won that race. Yeah, Oscar oh, Whiskey, so if you remember, if the cut fits, is won the last two. Call me Lord, beating in it. We takes his place. Before we get the, listen, you're going to get tips from, and, and you know, Ida is a winner in every race and lays as well. Matthew Jones opens up the social media comments. Master Tommy Tucker. Aye, aye, bit of love for that one. You placed it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I placed it. Yeah, <laughs> that I was the that. race we've just had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he stitched him up. Thanks. Oh, there already. Well, I just, up, I just wanted to get a reaction going, I didn't. Yeah, I just thought, you know, his, his jumping uh, is a little bit of a problem and with it being wet and sticky and horrible there, he might, you know, come a cropper, but he actually jumped really well and he's a very good horse. He is, isn't he? And so, Nichols is having Well done, you've had some of my money. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Good to have you on. Keep those socials coming in. You can get alive and kills Ross and indeed Alan as well. Welcome to Alan as well, just while we're talking about Ascot. That Cole Hurdle, because your big position of the day is to take one of the three on. Yeah, as I was saying to you guys earlier, um, I'm going to be against Lorena. Um, on her day, she's a, a high-class mare, but there's there's just so many doubts about her, isn't there? I know she's getting the way today, but... Um, the batch of Jared Sullivan horses that went from Willie Mullins over to Paul Nichols have been a little bit hit and miss. Obviously, Duke, Gene Duke to Geneva ran okay last week at Cheltenham, but there's too many negatives for me to be steaming in today. So you definitely, yeah, I'm going to be t taking the arena on him. I might have egg on my face come 246 or 247, but um, yeah, no, I'm happy, happy to be against her today. We'll find a way to throw one at you, Alan. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Through the <laughs> modern modernity of Skype, indeed. So listen, the racing is thick and fast. It's high-quality stuff. There may be some small fields, but there's always an angle in. We'll find it for you. Let us know your big hopes of the day. Do you want to be with Lorena, or do you want to be against her? Getting all that weight, let's see. Uh, first race preview, then. Shall we go to the 150 at Haydock? It's an absolute steamer of a handicap, this. We've had two, three races already. God, blimey, it starts early mm. these days, isn't it? <laughs> Um, three races already at, at Haydock Kills. Before we get the market up, it, it's fair to say it's going to be testing there. Uh, yeah, it's been lashing down um, probably since before racing, but it's definitely during all the races we've seen. Uh, one of the jockeys come in and said it's very, it's soft now, it will be heavy by the, by the end of the day if it keeps going like this. Mm. Uh, and it's looked like hard work. That so was Brian we, Hughes, wasn't it? One of slow leather yeah. deaths. That was 32 seconds slower than the standard. And well, they didn't hang around actually in that race at all. Well, this is, but this is the thing with Haydock, though. The first three races have all gone to horses who are pretty prominent uh, in the race as well. And again, it is a track that, you know, you make a mistake back in the pack and it punishes you. You've got to, mm. It's really hard to make up that ground. Is there any track at the moment that isn't a front runner's track? It seems <laughs> to be the way, doesn't it? Well, you know, most of it's governed by, by pace that you run at, isn't it? I mean, you see a lot of these, you see a lot of stiff tracks tend to be, tend to favour horses ridden from the front because the jockeys ride it that way because they know they've got to get up the hill. Mm. And that's when you get your sand downs and your, uh, and your Cheltenham, your stiff finishes, your new market, it's got a stiff finish. It's mostly downhill. Yeah. It's got that stiff finish and they tend to hold on to it a bit. Uh, and sharper tracks, you tend to have the horses come breezing through from the back because they, they go a lot faster. Um, but we'll, we'll just have to wait to see. You, I, I would say you probably need to be up with the pace because you know you make a mistake on tiring ground and you're already behind, you're in trouble, aren't you? you know? That leads us very nicely to the first race here on RP Live, this sizzling Saturday we've got for you. Myself, Dave Orson, Paul Keeley, Ross Briley and Alan Conway from Betfair steering you through. Don't go anywhere. This is the place where it's all going to happen. Let's get this 150 market up then because there is a horse that Keeley likes here from the front. I like him too as well. Uh, we put him up ourselves on a feature show that we did here on the Racing Post, it's Kid Commando. I wonder if he's still holding his place at the top of the market. There's a lot of unexposed horses here. Can we get the market up, guys, on the screen for the 150? Oh, we yeah, it's nice, a, a nice easy race for us there to start off, just the 14 runners. Um, Aravia Ar 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 Derchi is currently six favourite. Uh, Kid Commando at 6.8. Shake Him Up, Harry and Umbregado vote in at seven. And we're currently nearly 265,000 matched on the Betfair Exchange. Um, my one fancy in this race is down on the bottom, currently trading at 32 in the win market, Le Le Girien. Um, one, a two mile, two, two mile soft ground handicaps in Newbury. He did bomb out at Cheltenham, 
in March. But um, ran a nice race last time at Chepstow. Um, so for this race, I'm just not going to back him in the win. He's just a shade too big. But I'm going to have a £20 stake in the place market where we're playing four places. So hopefully he can run a nice race and get us off to a, a good start. Roscoe doing the trading for us uh, this afternoon. Th- there's very little money in the place market at the moment, so we'll put it in at four to one and see what get. Oh, it's been matched immediately. There you go. You never know what's going to happen on this show, do you? There was two quid up there, and suddenly this one was just waiting to snap our hands off. We had Bruce Millington in on Cheltenham Sunday, uh, and he he backed a horse by accident, which and, and, and it won. It was Ramsey's a detaille, and it, and of course that started Barry's. It's amazing how these things happen it would it had happened on the show before hadn't it yeah because i forgot to uh i forgot to put the in running lay back in and you know was it what was it there's a race at goodwood i think i forgot yeah, to put the in running move back in it and it uh, didn't work out it was a was it a later back on battleground or something like that it, it worked out beautifully, it worked out beautifully it? yeah so, so listen these things can happen <laughs> absolutely so you've it, we've definitely been matched to rather be lucky than good that, quite right absolutely and the Legere and alan conway starting off with a flyer then uh, Paul Kelly, as, as I mentioned, you've got you're a real fan of one in here. Yes, I, li- I like Kid Commando. I, I liked him last year. He had some decent, um, he had some decent bumper form. He was actually second in the Ascot bumper that's being run today to Saw and Glory. He had two starts over hurdles, and it looked like he got got in reasonably uh, well on his handicap debut when he first time out this year at, at Ascot. And he'd won that race an awful long way out. I'd say from three out, you name him as the, the winner. Nothing was going to get near him. He may well have got his own way up front, but you know there was a couple of lengths between them uh, jumping the second and last, the first three, and it was four and three quarter back to the second and ten, 10 more back to the third in the end. He's bred very much to want further than two miles as well. Yeah. He's going to go, he's going to be somewhere near the front end because he can race keenly. I can't see why they'd want to bury him. So I think he's got the right um, running style for this track on this day, given the conditions. Absolutely. I expect him to go. I do expect him to go very well. I'm surprised he, he's been overtaken in the market's favour by Ariva Dirchi. But I suppose um, Ariva Dirchi won that race at Weatherby the other day. We've seen Shang Tung win quite easily at Ascot. So the opener there today. That's a form stamp, that isn't was it? third, yeah. Yeah, OK. Warlord is in that race as well. We'll get to that. Um, so Paul's with Kid Kamado. I went against him in my tip because it was a prize thing. I actually thought he might go off as short as three to one at one so point. So did I, so, exactly. So, yeah. I, yeah. so the fact he's out of fires now, I'm definitely keeping him on my side, along with the aforementioned Warlord, who I think might just reverse that form with Ariva Dirchi, that Weatherby run. You've got chance, uh, while we're talking, you you know, if you've got your Race Post website up, get onto the member section, have a look at the replays that we're talking about. You'll hopefully see where we're coming. Nothing like watching back those replays. Ross Briley, what's going to win? Uh, I'm back in Warlord each way. Ooh. Um, I, I agree. I think that, I think that weather before was very interesting. Um, Shang Tang obviously has Frank the form. Shang Tang went all the way on the inside, which is a terrible place to be at Weatherby at the moment. So possibly a bit. It's interesting. The the, 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 the front two Warlord and Arriba Dirty uh, both came wide enough. So there's a possibility they're in the right place. But I just think Warlord will definitely come on for that run. You know, it was the back end of October. The Tizard authors have, have exploded into form in the last mm. few weeks. You know, their, their strike rate has, I think, he's almost trebled in the, since October for his, his runners at November. And this horse was quietly progressive last year, you know, as a, 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 as a, as a young hurdler running behind Sir Psycho at Exeter. And that McFabulous form is, well, fabulous, isn't it? It's, it's worked out incredibly well. Uh, beat Ashutor as well over hurdles. He's obviously gone on to, uh, to decent things off yeah. uh, marks in the 140s over fences. So... Looks really well handicapped for a yard whose um, runners have, have definitely come on for that first run. Yeah. So he should be, he, I don't think he, he won't front run, but he'll be on the pace. I mean, you've got Kid Commando, Shake Em Up Harry's, uh, Lil Agurian in particular, you know, pace angles Get in the race. Horses. Um, so hopefully, I'm hoping that Robbie Power just stalks those leaders um, and, and, and strikes late on. But I mean, it is an interesting race. Kid Commando in particular, I mean, the, the dam, I was a huge fan. Banjack's girl was a... An absolute Nigel cracker Twist and Davis, wasn't yeah. it? Just tough as they come. She didn't know. She didn't know how to lose, did she? <laughs> no. Enough. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. I like War Ho- uh, Warlord for the, mention, uh, the reasons you mentioned. I actually had to check his profile after weather because I thought he might be an ex-flat horse. I couldn't quite remember because he travels like one. Mm. And my worry with you is that he might get slightly too far back. So let's hope Robbie Power. Yeah, I'm ho- right. I'm there. hoping he, you know, sits in behind those um, three or four potential front runners. There you go. Okay, so you've got some some horses to have. 
a little go at. It does look like one of those uh, races, doesn't it? In fact, it looks like one of those races so much that I think we must all, all have one or two horses in there that you're like, <laughs> if that wins, I'm going to throw down my mic and storm out. <laughs> Mine would be our power. I don't know. I don't know. We're singing off the same uh, hymn sheet. Yeah. He's one of them, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. No, no, I mean, he looked really, you know, he looked really progressive last year. Those two runs at Kempton, the second one, you know, the third to downtown getaway, and then. Uh, uh, and then the win. Uh, it was an okay run at Cheltenham. Just yeah. a little bit worried that he doesn't actually want the ground as soft as it's going to be. That that would be my one issue with him. But he's very tempting. Um, I, I, there's been there's been talk about Fix Sun being a very decent horse, isn't there? And he just uh, didn't seem to happen for him last time. But he travelled an awful lot better than he finished. He might want to drop in trip. So that, uh, that was the key thing I thought at Cheltenham. I thought, oh, yeah. God, he's going to come into this and yeah. then bang, he just disappeared. Yeah. yeah, but he's an interesting horse at a, a, a very big price because he's obviously got some sort of engine there. You know? mm, OK, yeah, Fix Sun was, was a bit disappointing, wasn't he, I think? And maybe the ground, I'm not totally sure about that. In Endo's horses, you tend to have them on slightly sounder surfaces. They are right down at the start. That's the last chance to get involved. Mm. Let's go back to Alan Conway and see what the market's saying. Yeah, Arriva Dirty still strong at the market, 6.2. Kid Commando went to a shade of the 7 at one point, is back in, 6.4. Shake Mo Parry, a bit like Kid Commando, drifting a little bit, 8.2 now, and Umbregado coming in for a bit of support at 7 with just 419,000 pound max on the Betfair Exchange. So you can you can see Umbregado going well, can't you? Because he was, uh, he was fifth to Stony Mountain in the. Uh, in the three mile handicap here last year, and he travelled really, really well. The there, Grand honestly. Crew colours. Yes, exactly. He's coming, you know, and he's coming back in trip. You know, he, he's, you know, he's still very lightly raced. It was only seven to one shot for. I think now that was a hundred grand race base last year. He's going to want to be Butcher's dog fit, isn't he? To get uh, yeah, but yeah, he, he, he'll, he'll have to be. But he has gone well fresh in the past. In fact, he's won after a break a couple of times. You know, so I think pipe, you know, pipe hurdles at Haydock as well. You've gone Crew, Gabriel Chambertan, you know, Dynast that yeah, have been yeah, exactly, well, yeah, so. yeah. He's, he does like to target these kind of races. In fact, he's not, you know, he's, he wasn't far off um, joint favouritism a second ago. So the, it's a pretty lively market, that's for sure. I mean, it, look, it, looks a, it looks a lively race, so it's not surprising. Fergus Gillard taking off seven will help him, I suppose, mm. as well. Yeah, exactly. He's quite, tidy, he's quite tidy for that claim, isn't he? Got a lot of good little conditionals at the moment, haven't we? Mm. I say good little conditionals. Compared to us, Dave. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Every weight panel of gauze, absolutely. Ross Barney might have something to say about that. Who's going to take the first, who's take the first race? No, I think you should call Haydock and I'll do oh, that, okay. Scott. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that that one's great. Me. Yeah, well, listen, I'm happy to call this I take it you don't get paid by the runner then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> he might well do for all we know. That, that um, said, at Haydock, at least if the front runners, then you might just have to say one horse repeatedly for five minutes. Oh right, okay, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I've just had something touched off at Lingfield as well by a short head, so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I've got to swallow oh, that dear. one. I've had something get brought down at the first, but actually it's been quite a good start to the day so far somehow. But um, you've got one touched off by a short head and brought down, and it's a good start to the day. It, somehow it is. Yeah, <laughs> I was with Shantang, we also with a couple of others as well. But we've seen some good racing in Ireland as well, haven't we, guys? Over the last week, mm. yesterday we saw Fernie Hollow come back. Where does Fernie Hollow, what, he, uh, the champion bumper winner, he looked very tasty indeed. Uh, Notebook came mm. back earlier, pulled and won. Notebook looked good, didn't he? Yeah, he looked, he, he looked very good. I mean, you know, a bit of gloss taken off the race when the cash back fell at the first, obviously. But Fakir Duderis. But Fakir Duderis is a, is a really good benchmark. I tell you, I was telling you, like I tell everybody else, that horse wants three miles. He Didn't wasn't stopping, was he? He's a definite stab. Get him over three miles, you'd be very, very surprised at how good he'll be. Flag is up. It's a great time of year, isn't it? Because all these opinions that we've got for the big spring festivals ahead, mapping out what we think these horses should do. Where's Kid Commando lining up at the front? Yeah, this is a great thing, isn't it? You know, since the camera have got a lot better and they're just jumping off, we can see exactly what sort of positions they are going to take. And uh, I shall uh, take the mantle then in the uh, 14 runner uh, opener. <laughs> okay, so who's is indeed up there? That is time? Kid Commando. You're happy with that in Kills. Yeah, Kid Commando yeah, taking yeah, up the Yeah, I wanted him to be there, yeah. Yeah, okay, fair I enough. Just so wanted him to be there in another five minutes. And just explain that quickly because you think off the home bend you can that sharp home bend. Well, that sharp home bend you can definitely you can definitely nick a bit, nick a bit around there, and they you know in behind they get in each other's way sometimes mm -hmm. as well. The amount of times I've had horses at Haydock and I think, God, this is going well, and then you know they run into a bit of trouble. So oh, I'm quite happy being up there. I don't think I, I don't think he needs to lead, and I think he's, he, he looks like he's now actually asking him to to take a lead because he can be keen. Well, they are going a fair old lick, actually, as well. Yeah. Is that Le Legere and Alan that's mm -hmm. up the front? It is indeed, yeah. He's, he's going fairly quick for 
just testing conditions. Hopefully he's he's that lively in a circuit's time as well. With shake him up, Harry there as well. Has great, the market? Yeah. I mean, they're really strung out now. We'll get to the back markers for you in a little bit. Has the yeah. market suggested that that uh, they might be given too much rope? Um, Arrivederci is, is currently favoured at four point five. Um, Warlord just into six, and then. Shake them up, Harry at eight, but um, the market hasn't taken a strong view yet. That well, Arriva Dirty's live fourth, isn't he? So That's it. I think he's in a lovely spot. It's the perfect Andre. spot, that isn't it? Yeah. He's got he's yeah. got yeah. he's got his two market mm. rivals straight ahead of him in Shake Him Up, Harry and Kick Commando. Yeah. He's not too far yeah. off the pace. He's you know he's he's swinging along. Yeah. He's he's also out wide as well, so he's not going to get stuck yeah. in a pocket. Um, he was down too lowly rated to get into the boys' race at Cheltenham last season, and they wanted to take him to Aintree, which, as we know, didn't happen. Um, Forrest Behan looks like he's gone there, as, he, uh, as I'm hearing in like, my ear. We've got two Millwall supporters in the gallery today, so if, <laughs> if we all go off air at some point, you'll know exactly why. Uh, let's get back to the racing, because Le Legerian is now... Uh, we just see Forrest Behan, he's up absolutely fine. Uh, hopefully there'll be another day for him this season, I'm sure there will be. Just looking at Warlord, Ross, he's, he's, he's sitting a little bit further back than we would like as five go clear. Yeah, you've kind of got two groups, haven't you? You've got a group of five at the front, Lilligary and Shake'em Up, Harry, Kid Commando, Kaiser and Arriva Dirty, and then behind you've got Our Power and War Warlord who are coming out of it. Uh, Fix on struggling a bit down the middle, Dear Sire at the back endlessly, Flash the Steel off the... Uh, racing a bit fresh out the back as well. I mean... They don't seem to be going. They're not, they're not going a mad gallop, but yeah, there's a bit of a contest. It's so hard to tell given the ground, isn't it? Yeah. Just how fast they are going, especially when they, they're now, we're now seeing a bit of murk here, aren't we? But uh, uh, shake him up, Harry. He might have been a bit keen. I mean, he was trying to mm. he was trying to eat some grass on it's the way. That's Siskin the form, form, isn't it? Right? Shake him up, Harry. But yes, it's some, he's got some solid form behind him. That's for sure. It's the, the Ben Ben Pauling horses. Though, I always find they, they look incredible first time out, and then don't necessarily. Oh, something. Back something went second gone time. There. What was that that's gone out the back? Uh, we'll get one of the guys. Uh, Flash of steel. Fa Flash of Flash steel. steel. I tell you, when they do the new, the next commentators rosters, you've got to put your hat in for it because <laughs> I think you're the not people even who've been I mean, I'm going down and up and down the screen, <laughs> I'm not looking at what's going on. What's Brian's even looking at bet for? <laughs> okay, <laughs> so we're just about approaching. What is it? Probably fourth last now, isn't it, guys? I think, and they're bunching up a little yeah, bit, so the closers be, yeah. will have their chance. But there's Lilligarian going up up front. Before we get to the home straight, what's the market saying, Alan Conway? Arriva Dirty in the 3.85 now on the Betfair exchange with Umbregado 5.4 and Shake Up Harry at 6.6 .6 with just over 672,000 matched. I tell as you. They what. swing out of back straight, so plenty, plenty to play for. Thank you, Alan. Is this is this Kaiser? Yeah, no, oh, there was no. money for Kaiser this, this morning. This is another one of my cliff horses. This, I, I, whenever he wins, I'm not on, mm. and when he whenever he runs a blinder and just comes up short, I'm not. Warlord is going really, really well, but he's got a lot of ground to make up. Kid Commando going back through the field. Yeah, he's going back through the field. Yeah, he shook him up. I thought he was coming back on a bridle for a minute, but he did shake him up before that, and it doesn't look. Good. Well, we're coming to a what is it? Um, Brigado, is this swinging the third away last now? Well. So shake him up, Harry. Still Warlord. to be asked a question. The closers are coming. Warlord is indeed. Oh, oh Rivadurch oh, is gone. Oh. He's gone. Calls him in a bit of Warlord. carnage in Babug. Warlord's now, Warlord, on the where is Warlord? He's, is he on the he's bridle? He's in second. He's on the bridle. Look okay, at him. Yeah, the, okay, so the, we're coming up towards the second last. It, I tell you what, it's a long home straight at Haydock. Shake him up, Harry. Pings it. Warlord not so great. Is that Umbregado? Um, guys yeah, with a good chance? Stays three miles, of course. So is anything going to come and pick him up from the back? Doesn't look that way. Three way play then shake him up Harry Warlord coming back on the bridle but could this be one for Team Pipe Umbregado Still all on the last on two the horses going clear Warlord, Warlord reaches for it on the far side on, Umbregado just that lack right. of a run is going to come up short Warlord yes. looks like he's going to take this progressive young horse What? where, where would Aravadurchi have finished of course he beat him last time our power steaming home looks like he's going to pick up shake him up Harry for third. I'll tell you what he's, he's tying up about he's just idling this, he's is idling. Too, this is gone isn't it finally surely he's tying up towards the finish Umbregado coming back gamely in second our power from nowhere for third and shake him up Harry in fourth if you were playing five places it was the Kaiser that was hard work it was indeed wasn't it did they go a little bit too hard do we think there guys I'm not 100% certain shake him up Harry's there all the way wasn't he yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 uh, like you said, you had those two groups, didn't you? Um, they had the front five who, who kind of kicked on, and I mean, Riva Dirty falling. Obviously, we, we don't quite know what would have, what would happen to him, but he was he was travelled incredibly well. But and we're watching it back now. This is where he can't, he just guesses oh, at it. Yeah, he kills. Just, it's not even a, yeah, I mean, he just didn't even pick up really, did he? Yeah. He just stepped at it. Really. Oh, he's, a, he's, a, he's had a few tumbles. He's up and he's straight up onto his feet. Yeah, he's up and running. He's okay. But with a young okay. horse like that, you wonder where you go after a fall like that. Uh, anyway, Warlord. Um, he's I mean, he's he has gone through this. Like like a decent horse, mm. and me, and he's had to make up that ground. 
I mean, he's like I said, he the, the Tizard horses at the moment are uh, you know completely different horses to what we were running, running a month ago, and um, like I said, another winner from that McFabulous form. I think that's five or six horses have come out of, of that and franked it. And what, what's really impressive here, I think, is I know he's got the fitness edge on Brigado, but he didn't have the guaranteed stamina edge on him, and he's. I mean, if you, if you said who was the horse who ran in the three mile the last year, you, you probably would have said Warlord over in Brigada, yeah. the way they've fin they finished. He's definitely got a turn of foot, Warlord, and he does want. He just, I think this two mile four would be absolutely ideal for him. So they'll be able to have some fun with him running on, at, like I said, out of nowhere, our power. Yeah, I think the third. I think the third has done really well because I think that would be short enough for him, two mile three furlong, even in the conditions, which trainer said he wasn't all that. Good. Uh, sure yeah. that he'd handle. I so think he does want slightly better ground, yeah, doesn't he? Probably that. better ground and another couple of furlongs. He's going to be interesting. Debrief on Kid Commando. Come a bit soon, perhaps? Uh, didn't stay, did he? I don't think. Right. I uh, don't think he jumped that well early. Um, and again, he, he was just he was just keen. Aidan Coleman, you know, he, he was going to make the run and then he decided, well, hang on a minute, I better take a lead because he is a bit keen, And but it just didn't work. Yeah. I mean, he's finished sixth. He hasn't, you know, he, he hasn't been beaten absolutely out of sight. But um, I mean, apart from Shake Up, uh, Shake Up Parry, who, who did have kind of guaranteed stamina, you know, he's one of the, the few in that leading pack that, that did keep going. But it is, it was a bit of a, like I said, you run up against Warlord and Umbregado, who have been tested over further. It was a bit right, of a, yeah. um, yeah. a fact finding mission for them. So, yeah. Yeah. Just go to Alan Conway then, get the story of the I market. I think they might be tempted to drop back. I just, you know, what, just kid come on, looking though? at him there, his hurdling wasn't great, was it? Mm, okay, so a bit of a debrief there we need to have. Let us know what you think. Have what should we do with it. the beaten horses there? Uh, Alan Conway, just tell us about the story of the market before we move on to Ascot. Warlord hit a, an interesting high now. He's 42 in the run. He hit a, hit a high on the Betfair Exchange. Umbregado hit a low of 1.52 just when he looked he looked about to, to challenge. But um, it, it would have been interesting if Ari Viserci had a, had a stayed up. I know it was probably a bit too too far out to have a, a major impact. But um, you know, Warlord was hit a high of 42, I suppose, given the conditions. People were chancing that he might not come back to the to the leaders, but um, yeah, he pl he plugged on well, well didn't he, in, in testing conditions. Mm, thanks, then, Alan. Yeah, okay. So lively. Oh, did you get any of that in running money on War Lord? He was backed in for about eleven to one sevens on the off, hit forty five in the run. Amazing game. Let's move on then to the two oh five. It is the Chanel Farmer nineteen sixty five chase. It's been called many many names over the years, but has been won by some absolute worldies. And uh, I think. Let's get the market up before we get a selection from the panellists and, and, a, and a, a real steer on exactly what sort of field we've got then. Uh, Alan Conway, Imperial Aura, holding his price. Yeah, 2.7 at the moment, Dave, a real steal at 3.5. Black Horton, 4.8. And Itchy Feet, the outsider, at 6.8. with Just over 231,000 matched. As you said, it's a, it's, a, it's a race that's been won by some some cracking horses, isn't it? It's hard to believe a year ago that Suriname and Altior were battling out. It's gone by in the, in the blink of an eye. Um, I know Paul and yourself are keen on Imperial Aura <laughs> and I am too. He um, He's just progressing very nicely, isn't he? And a bit like Paul says, I think he's going to be a proper grade one horse in time, but he has to go and prove it today, doesn't he? So I'm going to stick my neck out and have 25 win bet on Imperial Aura to continue his rise up the ranks. Okay, Roscoe, doing the trades today for Alan over in Ireland, if you wouldn't mind. 25 it is. Do, 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 do. Matched straight off the bat. There we yeah. go. It's, it, it's, it's, uh, what sort of price should he be, or, uh, should he be Kills? <sighs> it's one of those hard to say. He is the wrong price at the market. Let's, you know, take it around. He's £7 worse in at the weights with both Real Steel and Black Corton. Uh, and he's only £1 well in at the weights with Itchy Feet, who himself was a good grade one winning novice. So, you know, you've got to you've got to bear all that in mind. He's a very good horse, he's a very good jumper, he's got race fitness, uh, although two of the others have run. I wouldn't be backing him at less than five to two, to be honest. He is priced up as though he's made that jump and he you know and he hasn't yet. So the question I've got for you before we go to Ross uh, for his selection, why is he this price? Is it the, is it the rivals he's up against being more exposed? Well he has you know, he's you know, he's comes here having won at the Cheltenham Festival. I mean, one in command in fashion, you know, albeit only in an intermediate chase at Carlisle. So he comes here with those two wins next to his name. He obviously landed a gamble at the Cheltenham Festival, you know, winning favourite there. Uh, and, you know, he's obviously got plenty more in him, plenty more improvement to come, you would have thought, uh, at the age of seven. Uh, and the others, you know, two, the other two, Real Steel, you know, he's still only seven, but he's been around a lot longer. And Black Court, of course, is nine. So they, you know, they don't have that improvement to make. Uh, they don't necessarily need to make any improvement to win the race as it stands. Yeah. Uh, and Itchy Feet definitely has as much improvement 
uh, in him uh, as Imperial Law does. He was thought to be a top novice last year, wasn't he? Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, he was he, he was getting really real, really well fancy for Cheltenham. He won uh, he won the um, Henry the Eighth. Yes, uh, he did at, at Sandown. Yep. And he won it really because if you remember, Murphy he got there, really fancied him. He got he? there cruising at the last at Sandown and actually pitched on landing. And he still picked himself up, and he still, you know, he still won going away. So he's a very handy horse himself. Uh, you know, I'd love to see Imperial Aura win. I'm, it's tugging at my heartstrings because. Have you backed him for the Ryanair? I haven't. No. No, because we we spoke to Kim Bailey, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, this no, week no, together. he's. You know, I. You know, I. I it's all. It looks like that's little, where he's going. I do very little anti-post betting these days. They, they, they've got to really stand out as the wrong price, and I don't think he's the wrong price. Mm, okay, uh, what's going to win then, Gills? Just great. Uh, I think Black Corton. Mm. I'm, you know, it's a bit like that notebook race we were talking earlier. Though I'm toying with the idea of just backing the one that's the biggest price because I don't think there's that much between any of them. I don't think they'll end up being that much between any of them at the weights. Ross Briley. Yeah, I, I know what you mean, but I guess the the price for Imperial is probably the he's the only one. He's got the class question mark, but he hasn't. Got, he's got. He's, he's fit. He, you know, like I said, he, he's. He's got a Channel Festival win on his name that's going to be fresh in many people's memories. Comes from a yarder in fantastic form. I guess the worry is Real Steel has question marks to answer with the, the switching yards. Black Court and, you know, he could easily, he could get loose a little Likes bit. Likes Ascot, doesn't he, Black Court? And yeah, and obviously stays a lot further, so could really mm. put the, the stamina to the test out of the rest of them. Itchy feet, I don't know. I got, horses who excel in those Sandown races, they look fantastic at Sandown and they go elsewhere and it doesn't necessarily work out for Interesting. them. Interesting. And he comes off the back of he loves to come off the back of really strong fractions as he did in the uh, the Supreme where he you know came from nowhere to hit the frame. So I'm not necessarily sure whether the the race is going to be run to suit. And also Ollie Murphy horses a bit. Yeah, he, he had, had something hosed up in the first at Huntingdon today to counter that. I'll Absolutely, or right. <laughs> <Albeit, laughs> a novice race. He did have a winner the other day. Yeah. He did have a couple run well at Cheltenham. Um, but yeah, I was a little bit concerned about the form. Yeah, but, yeah. You know, I'm less so now. He, he has a lot of short priced horses, doesn't it? It's he? A, does. It's a, it's, I don't know whether that's a Gordon Elliott thing or he has a lot of decent stock as well. We're around about two or three minutes off then. I'm with Imperial Aurea. Mm. I, I, I only had to look back at the replay of the Carlisle run. There were some good horses in that Carlisle race. I pitched a question to Kim Bailey when I spoke to him this week about the ground. I always thought they were steering him towards decent ground. Actually, he got short, saw shins, he was saying one time, and they think he's absolutely fine on it. He proved that to me. The way he travels through the races, I can see Ascot being right up his street. So I'm hoping Imperial or a proves himself a proper grade one horse here as well. Let's get a final market check then as they amble around and get ready to jump off with Alan Conway. The money's coming for Black Court and into second favour now at 4.0 in the Betfair Exchange. Imperial Aura will go off favour, 2.62. Real Steel, slight drift out to 4.9 and itchy feet at 5.7 with just over 570,000 matched on the Betfair Exchange as they get ready to jump off. Absolutely fascinating race, thanks, Alan. Because there's no rags here at all, kills, are there? This is, you know, five to one, the biggest. No, I don't think anything would surprise you. I mean, obviously, Black Corton goes really well at the track. We know that. Yeah. Uh, but all the others, they've got you know rock solid form. Like I said, if, if this was a handicap, Real Steel would be given nine pounds. He, he ought to be fav on paper, shouldn't he? he? Yeah. Yeah. On, on paper, yeah. I mean, he ran yeah. a, I mean, I've watched the Gold Cup back to refresh my memory and at one point you think crikey he's, he's really yeah. swinging yeah. he's very good fresh they yeah. think he needs to go right handed as well or, or, or Willie Mullins did yeah. changed ownership hasn't he which has gone to the Capeland Colours who runs later yeah. on in our two mile race we finished with the bumper and Ascot the flag is up then for the 1965 grade 2 Fla- Chanel Farmer chase are we going to see something special here is it going to be cat and mouse Ross Briley will call them home for us yeah, lining up with um, Black Court and Imperial Aura, also not too far away. Itchy Feet going to be held up last, as he always is. Um, and then Real Steel in between, I imagine. Um, and like I said, yeah, I, I, I wish I had called the Haydock race, because I'm going to have to think of things to say with well, four yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 You kind of did call half of it anyway, actually. Yeah. I just spooned it off. They're off and running. They're off and running, yeah. Black Court on surprisingly uh, taking the lead and going to make this a, a bit of a stamina test. Imperial Aura's on the outside, uh, Real Steel in behind, and then Itchy Feet uh, out the back, and as they jump the first, everything pretty mm. solid over that. Uh, itchy Feet maybe a little bit uh, keen out the back, suggesting that you know, Black Court and... Uh, isn't making, uh, uh, isn't going off too fast in front here. But that's that's in theory, gents. That's a perfect position for Imperial Aura. This is what yeah, she well, tends to know, do, it, kills, isn't it? Uh, yeah, Brian, she's really good. I mean, the, the last thing you want to do when you go from the front is to go off like a hair straight away. Yeah. You know, you want to be winding it up from halfway. She holds them. She holds Yana them. Enki at Cheltenham last yeah, week was a exactly. great case. She holds point. them and she gets them into a rhythm. 
So there's three coming up here with the Black Court and jumping it with Imperial Aura. Itchy Feet again just has to uh, get himself over it. Real Steel on the inside. Uh, Black Court and Imperial Aura, Real Steel and Itchy Feet racing. Why Black Court? Another good jump. Itchy Feet just steps bit into slow, it a little bit. Yeah. Deliberate, as we mm. call it. Again, he always looks like a proper horse when, when he can get dragged into it off a strong pace. And this isn't necessarily going to suit him. Black Court and Imperial Aura just dragged the, uh, the back legs through it there, Real Steel, who's... Um, starting to pull himself a bit yes. further towards the, uh, the yeah, lead. He's and keen as well, isn't he? he is. yeah. let's, get, let's get a word with Paul Keeley then, because I think they've got the tactics just right Ooh. here on Imperial. I had a little think about that one, but it, 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 I think he's perfectly he, he poised, needs to be. He? he needs to be close. You've got to remember, he was up there all the way at Cheltenham. Yeah. He, he needs to be close. Like, you know, he's not one of those horses with, a, with that big turn of foot. Like, you know, and he, you wouldn't really want to let Black Horse get away, you would you? wouldn't want to get him, no. I, yeah. I would definitely... When, when Bryony decides that she's going to up it, he will go with her. I, I wouldn't be, I'd be surprised at all. Uh, the only thing is, is he going to be good enough? Well, this we will we find know. out. No excuses from there. So, with uh, they're passing the stands for the first time, Alan Conway, how's the market reacted thus far? 2.72 Imperial Aura, uh, Real Steel into 3, Black Horton 4.7, and Itchy Feet 11.5 after a few sticky jumps, shall we say, in the first circuit. But, um, yeah, no, oh, lovely still, very, still very much all up, all up for grabs. I just, I th I th thanks, Alan. I think you're right with what Itchy Feet looks like. The one that, I mean, he's, he's going to have, he's got his work cut out. Lovely jumps we've seen just while Alan was talking there from Imperial Aura. Yeah, I think that's the thing. I mean, they're passing the winning post for the first time, so we've got, um, you know, a circuit to go here. And so far, Imperial Aura has done everything that they've asked of him, which is exactly what he did at Carlisle. Again, he, he jumped, he jumped for fun there, and he, he left some decent horses in his wake as well, and, and, and managed to drag out mistakes from half decent horses as well. So we've got three. Uh, to uh, to jump down here with uh, with Black Court and just trying to go through the yes. gears a little bit here, trying to uh, get a decent jump uh, from uh, from Black Court. He's Bryony Frost, but he just steadies into it. Gets out jumped by Imperial Laura. Yeah, Itchy feet good, goes through the back. That's a at masterful back. jump that was. It like, was yeah. he, he asked him for a biggie there, there, and he went for it. Dave he, Bass he is keen not to go too soon here, isn't he? Yeah. But he's going to have to take him on, I think now. Mm. Well, that's the thing. Oh, here we go. If anything, that, it, it, I think the horse just got a bit. Sort of, he said, "Where's the uh, where's my pacemaker gone there?" Because he didn't yeah. have anything to uh, to lead him into that fence. So I think he actually want he really want Black Court to come back here, which he is doing down the inside. Hopefully, though, these two won't buzz each other up and set it up for real steel. But a oh, lovely jump what. again. I oh, mean, and Black Corton's unseated oh, the rider. Black and that's unusual kills, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, well, Imperial Law jumping so well, he's got a very good jumper on the ground. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I mean, he's, he's Imperial Law went, went, went from the front when, oh. he, when, he, when he ran at Chepstow over hurdles last year. So he's no stranger to being there. I don't think it would bother him that much. What price did you say when Alan Conway, what price Imperial Law are now with about five to jump? 1.88 and real sale 2.96 with itchy feet at eight. But um, yeah, it's a lovely couple of jumps there from Imperial Aura down at the back, wasn't it? He's really just see, sighting up each fence and taking them on. If you're on itchy feet now, guys, I guess you're wanting real steel to come and have a crack on you and soften up. Well, yeah, Imperial I mean, bit. he has warmed up a little bit, but he's now sort of being asked to keep in contention. I don't know whether it's, you know, he loses a little bit of ground in the air every yeah. time, doesn't he? Not a lot. It's not, not doing anything that bad. Real Steel is now showing his speed in between the fences, Ross Briley. Yeah, he's gone odds on favourite, Real Steel. Because, again, I mean, he does have that class edge over Imperial Aura. Like I said, he was, he was swinging along coming into the home straight in the Gold Cup. So, you know, we know he's got an engine. Uh, so it's Real Steel and Imperial Aura. Imperial asks for a big one, he gets oh, it. We've got to remember that Real Steel was here. a bit keen early on as well, so I wonder if Imperial Aura's fitness he's might He's got to hold the inside here. kills, hasn't he? David Bass here, it's yeah, four out. He's, he's got no problem oh, holding the inside there, and he's just he's, he's actually jumping them into the ground. Yeah. Come on then, the Imperial, as they this swing into the home bend. <laughs> Ross Bridey! Yeah, they turn into the home straight off the bridle, his itchy feet, as is Real Steel, who was keen early on and looks like he needs this run, but Imperial Aura is absolutely swinging away as they turn into the home straight. David Bass is is just keeping him up to his work with two to jump and they come up to the uh, the second last and Imperial Aura just just wandering about a little bit as he comes to the, uh, the penultimate oh, fence. Oh, he's not That's putting in a short one there. Real Steel will come back at him, guys. He is Real Steel. No, Again, he that, he that early... he's, he's got this in the bag. He should he's, have it in the bag, he's yeah. a little bit. He's Real Steel's running up and down on the spot, isn't yeah, he? Yeah, Imperial Aura, yeah, given a couple of cracks by David Bass, comes up to the final fence. He just needs to jump this to Saw win. it up then. Go on, my friend. Over oh, you go. There we go. I mean, it looks like Itchy Feet might run on for second as his he tends to do in these kind of races. But Imperial Aura, he had class question marks over him. But he's answered them there, and he's won very, very nicely indeed to be Itchy Feet and Real Steel. Yes, that is a classy also. performance. Woo! Really that was, that was very was nice good, indeed, was, wasn't it? It was a very good performance, yeah. Yeah, OK, before we go to Alan Conway for the story of the market and potential anti-post quote, Paul Keeley, give us a summary. What are you thinking at this point? I'm, I'm thinking he's going to be a serious player in a while. Uh, anyway, you know, I, I, I needed to see it. 
Uh, and to be honest, you can still pick holes in that form because at the end of the day, he's only beaten a horse rated 154. Um, but he's done so and he was in command a long, long way out. What? And his jumping is really, really good. What I like about this kills is he did look a bit of a reluctant leader, didn't he, when, when Black Court, he just soared past him at three, broke that one's heart a little bit and that one got rid of Brian. Yeah, it, I just think he needs to be kept awake. Because he because mm. went real still on the far side about four out. Clever ride, really, from Harry Cobden because he thought, right, Let's find out any deficiencies in you. He used that that in between the fence speed, that flat speed. He, he did great attitude, this horse. But I mean, the way that Real Steel's finished, you've you've got to question whether he, he used the gas up in the, the the wrong part of the race there, yeah. because um, he, he has faded quite tamely down the home straight. And Itchy Feet again. I mean, Itchy Feet just it's the same race every single time, isn't yeah. it? And yeah. he needs him to it's, come back to it's it. I don't know. Was he staying on? Was he staying on, or was he just passing a, was a, a fading horse? Yeah. He, he, again, could he just be one of those red herrings? Let us know out there. Were you with Imperial Aura? Have you been with Keels on this wonderful ride so far? Kim Bailey, that's going to be a decent interview. Look out for that on your members section a little bit later on. You'll be able to get that as soon as the race is far from the analysis department, of course, in the reports as well. Or did you think that maybe this was a false favourite, Real Steel would get up there? What do we do with Real Steel now? What do we do with Itchy Feet? Have we seen the Ryanair favourite? Let's go to Alan Conway to find out what the anti-post market says. He is indeed. He's now 7 one five from 12-1 to 1 on the Betfair Sportsbook. Um, it was a lovely round of jumping, wasn't it? I know Ross picked it up dur during the run, but the great thing about Imperial he was looking for every fence, wasn't he? As soon as he jumped one, he, David Bassett was just having to take him back, take him back, and he was. it was a beautiful round of jumping. And Yeah, no, there's, there's not too many better sights, is it, than a, a good jump horse. Really enjoying his job, and yeah, no, the markets reacted accordingly. Seven to one five for the Ryanair. So, yeah, all roads lead to Cheltenham after another impressive performance. It's, it's worth pointing out that that novice handicap chase at Cheltenham has <laughs> provided uh, possibly the favourite for the Ryanair. Here he goes, a Grade One winner in Aplutard <laughs> the year before, <laughs> and the powers that be at Cheltenham in their wisdom have decided to bin it for a Mickey Mouse mare's race. What is going on? Oh, you, you had to get that in. Oh, I, had you, to, I, mean, you know, I think everything's. Assume. I'll tell you what. Keep backing horses <laughs> from the novice handicap last year because it's just going to get not gonna, kills. We're not going to get another one. No. It's, 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 it does seem a bit yeah. remarkable. It's always been an absolute cracker of it's a race. It's been a marvelous well. race to the yeah. program. That was something you said. Twenty-eight it, races at Cheltenham. I'd have got with a twenty-three before that one. Yeah. So who's? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> let's go down the list, Paul. <laughs> so who's he got to beat in the Ryanair? Obviously Min, who's another year older. Alaho, I suppose. Yeah, um, Min will be back. I lost in translation. Right. Who we see a little bit later on? Could he go that way? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Sam Crow. Gold Cup. Yeah. Sam Crow. Sam Crow could easily be there. Another year older though, isn't it? Crow. Melon. Melon. Um, might get a shot of winning a race. Yeah, he's got a bit quiet. Yeah, I mean, it's look. It, it, you know, at, at this stage of the year, it's always building up into a marvelous race, isn't it? And then you get six runners on the day because things go wrong. But at the moment, he's in pole position because he's shown how well he is. He's shown how good a jumper he is. Yeah, uh, and he's shown that he's very much on the up. Absolutely lovely. We had Paul Keeley in the studio when Imperial Aura took out a grade two. And I backed so, against him. And who went against him? I hope it's not going to be another one of those I days. I couldn't help myself. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, you can't give a good man down, though, no, Kills. Exactly. And I think, I think exactly. that you, you've got a couple of arrows in the 225, which is where we go next at Haydock. It is the Betfair Exchange Stayers Handicap Hurdle, the Grade 3. It's going to be a right old test this over an extended three miles. It's always been a great handicap. There has been an anti-post gamble in this because the Irish Mayor Relegate, Alan Conway, looks like she might just go off clear five. She is definitely clear five now, Dave. 7.45 on the Betfair Exchange. Third win, the Drifter out to 8.2. Imperial Alcazar, 8.4. Main fact, 8.6. And the Jam Man. Very, very interesting jam man. I'm not sure if you saw his last race, but he absolutely dotted up in the Troy Town on the Navin. Um, he's currently 9.6. Um, much like the, the last race, fiercely competitive. I'm just going to have small place bet on Dolphin Square, currently trading at 14 in the win market. Um, second last time out, he's up another two pounds, but a decent weight, racing weight, 10 stone 10. Dickie Johnson in the plate, so I'm going to play him in the place market, and I have a twenty-pound bet on him. How much place mark? How much is that, Alan? Uh, twenty, Ross. Twenty. Yeah. Dolphin Square. 20 David Maxwell, of course, on the sidelines. Match at three point seven. Okay, thank you very much, Dolphin Square. Uh, yeah, nibbled that indeed. Okay, Ross Bright, let's come to you this time. 
Well, I think, I think again, we, we were all in agreement with Imperial Aura. We might all be in agreement in this race, I think. So apologies for saying exactly what you're all thinking in this one. But <laughs> I, I think this third win's got an absolute cracker of a chance. Um, I mean, last year, this it, it progressed through the ranks in, in, in testing ground um, when he was still very, very inexperienced. You know, he won at Sandown, he won at Wincanton in really good style. Those races have worked out well. But it's the run in the Potemps that's an absolute blinding run. He finished fourth behind three horses, Cider Burley, the storyteller, and uh, Two A Per Me, who'd had, yeah. I think, between 15 and sort of 25 runs each in really good races. The front two have won greater races since. Third wind was probably the most inexperienced horse in the field, but he was travelling like the best. Uh, uh, but he just had a bit too much to do, and a bit like he did on his return at Newbury, he, he just he oozes class. Didn't quite get home as strongly as the others, but he's a year older and. I think, as, as Paul said in his, his, his column in the, in the Racing Post, you know, the Newbury race didn't suit him, but he was the big eye-catcher at one point. He looked like he was coming into it, but I think they just quickened away from him. Um, but this, this track, his sharp track form, soft ground form, run under his belt, I, I'm struggling to see a downside. Mm, I, well, I agree, and I know you can curse. Yeah, I mean, you know, you could literally just... Cut and paste, basically. I mean, you know, he's, you know, he's got <laughs> Sorry, <to> Paul. <laughs> <laughs> We're all you know. good friends on this yeah, show. I mean, you know, y your one concern is he travels, but does he find? But, mm. I mean, let's, you know, let's... Oh. But, you know, you know oh. you've know, got to look for every negative before you have a punt, haven't you? You can hear yeah. all these possibles. Yeah. Now, now, you know, the point being that he did move really well at Newbury and, and uh, he got slightly out of pace and, and moved back on a bio and then he didn't find so much. Now, that could easily be, given given how young he is, it easily be that he just needed to run. And if that's the case, then then he, he's very much the one to beat. Um, I've backed another one called Colooney in the race. Uh, yep. Charlie Murphy's he's been on the drift. I, I, I backed him at 12 to 1 earlier in the week. He can get a fair bit bigger than that. Yeah, he catches his eye, doesn't he? Uh, it's just one of those things. He looked like he was crying out for three mile last year and... and he dropped down to two mile three and travelled really well and won easily at Fontwell. Now I know it was only Fontwell, but the the fourth was third to um, Captain Tomcat up the straight. At, at, yeah, up the straight. That was, uh, and then and then second to um, uh, Chantry House over fences yep, yesterday. yesterday. So um, you know I think that form's quite interesting, uh, and he's got very very low weight. He has he won three four. He ride, runs off, doesn't he? And uh, let's, let's just just looking at the number of race form interactive. Uh, one, two, three, four of the last five have been in the mid 130s as well, to tell you that. So, uh, with a one next to their name, actually. So, Kaluni does tick a lot of boxes, I'll give you that. And you must have thought, Kiels, that, that during the summer, they must have had a little look at this in the programme book, mustn't they? Well, you'd have thought so, yeah. I mean, you know, he's one of those horses that uh, he hasn't done much, he hasn't done much racing. Uh, so, you know, he's been lightly raced and he just looks like he's improving at the right time. It's whether he stays or not, there's definitely. It definitely looks like he will. Yeah. Uh, whether he's got the, uh, the right amount of experience, like I said, he looked a right slog there, didn't it? You know, and that's you know that's what worries you about any horse with with, with a lack of experience. And I suppose it's why the Jam Man was you know was the one that was coming in for loads of money early on. Shall now, we talk about the, the, well, the we sticky saw, Jam Man? <laughs> you know, well the Jam Man wins the Jam Man wins the Troy Town. Everyone goes mad over it. But let's bear in mind he was running off 129 yeah. over fences, which is a mark way lower than his hurdles mark. And his hurdles mark in Ireland's 143, and he'd been given another five by the British handicapper here. So, you know, he went he, he went quite short, didn't he? He went about four to one, didn't he, uh, at one point yeah. uh, on Friday. Uh, quite weak. It's, it's just the whether... opposite of what he was for the Troy Town. Yeah, well, well of course, because Tom Segal put him up for that as well, didn't he, price-wise, on the day. I can't remember the last time Troy Town winner. A1, like, as, uh, in that fashion, and went off that short as well. He looks like a sort of Grand National to me, really. I think that's going to be the way they're pointing. It's had some run, Ronan McNally, hasn't he? Controversial at times as well. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, he's, he's getting a, he's good at placing his horses, isn't he? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Finding the right races yeah. for him, that's for sure. And she's, can, she can ride a bit as well, she, can't yeah. she? Maxine There's a lot of confidence there, isn't yes. there? Yes. Um, What's the other one? Drill deal, isn't it? The other one in the same colours. It is easy to be confident, admittedly, when you might have a stone in hand. That is. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's right. Yeah. The, the, I would say that a the one barrow thing, of stones in hand. Yeah. <laughs> I would say that what he has got in in, in his favour, which are, quite a few of these are haven't, is that he will definitely stay the trip. You know, quite a okay. few of these haven't won over the three miles, which, as you said about third win, travels like a, a really nice horse over that trip. But so far, his two runs so far, mm. he's travelled and he's been outstayed over it. So. Um, at least the Jamman stays a trip. This is going to be an in-running. This is it. You saw what can happen on the running. Yeah. And if you remember last year, 
Oh, his stony mountain came from the clouds. Didn't Absolutely he? nowhere Henry Dad is running, didn't he? Yes, of course. Yeah. I actually so, backed you know, him in that, believe it or not. It's a long run in. I remember sitting it's... at Watford and sort of half seeing it, like, terrible Wi-Fi at football grounds you get, and I was sort of, I sort of threw it away, you know. I can't That's be doing it. people are normally watching the football. But <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm there like this. When you watch Watford, there's not a great deal of action going on either end. Uh, let's get a social on the screen. What have we got coming up? Topical. Mark Smith, great to have you on. Mark. You guys give Holstone a chance in the next. Plenty of soft ground form and back class two. Ran in the Great West Yorkshire hurdle last time, didn't he? Behind the mayor, whose name escapes me at the minute. The skeleton mayor, who absolutely hosed up at Weatherby. Roxana. Oh, Roxana, Roxana, yeah. 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 I mean, look, he's a lovely horse. He's been around for ages. I don't think he wants a real stamina test at the Sloggy set. ground. And uh, more importantly, to win a race like this, you need at least seven pound and a of a handicap, and he ain't got that, has he? But back class is something that you like, isn't it? Back class is something I like if you've dropped far enough in the handicap to make use of it. But I mean, I don't think he has. Mm, okay, that's you know what I mean, he's still quite that. high, isn't he? Well, he's got yes. I mean, uh, he's actually got just the best. I say just the best hurdle uh, RPR of one five seven. I thought he might be a one sixty odds at some point in there, but one four nine. So I guess he needs to come back to it. The he's, interesting thing about him, Keith Marrow's betting editor, who's had on this panel many, many a time. I think afterwards he wrote he wrote this was uh, you know a Labrooks Trophy horse, and and obviously they've got Kildesart for that, and they've opted for this instead, pointed towards Kildesart, I think for next weekend. We'll be covering that for you, Labrooks Live as well. Have you got a poke in the Labrooks Trophy? Just well, he's a, to to a, he's a bit of a cliffy of mine. You know, I'm a, a big fan of him. He ran one well in that hurdle race. Uh, I I, a massive each way bet on him a couple of years ago in the JLT. Couldn't see him finishing out of frame and did what they all do. When they do, they finish fourth. <laughs> uh, lovely <laughs> four next to their name. Okay. Uh, it turned out to be a rather, a rather better race than I thought at the time we'd lost in translation and deafy disorder. <laughs> yeah, in hindsight, <laughs> it was a big ass really. He, he actually it? had no chance. He ran, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he ran the race of his life. Yeah. Okay, so Labrick's Trophy next weekend. But it's all about Betfair today, sponsoring the entire card up at Haydock. And one of the handicaps of the entire jump season up there, the stayers. Here we go. We'll relegate... Jump cleanly enough. That's the big question mark about her, isn't it? First time cheap pieces, Ross Briley. Yeah, I mean, as a Watford fan, you, sh you should be on relegate, really, shouldn't you? But, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got another week of him Very after this good. as well. Very Don't good indeed. Watford fans, good. watch this, by the way. I'm a, I'm a Wednesday fan, so we, I'm, I should, maybe I should be on it as well. <laughs> you are absolutely going down, my friend. Um, yeah, quite right. The question for, I mean, apart from, apart from Stony Mountain, um, you know, like I said, again, you, 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 you can kick off the front in these three-mile races. I remember, is it this race at closing ceremony? I think about years ago for Emma Lavelle, who just kept going and going and going. Paisley and Park won this, didn't they? Yeah, two years yeah. ago. So, Sam Spinner. But you want, but, I mean, you want, to be a, you want to be a potential grade at all. I mean, this is the thing with, you were saying about Holstone dropping down. There are some really classy younger types. Relegate is one of them, obviously. Yeah. We, I haven't seen a race yet that's been Champion run Champion bumper winner. She just can't jump properly, can she? Yeah. She's one of those perennial eye catchers. Hopefully not like third win, but the two of them are dominating the market. But if she could do a stony... If she's going to win, she's going to win she's like She's going to come from nowhere. Mountain. A little bit like Warlord in the previous race. He made out loads of ground. Two we haven't spoken about. Imperial Alcazar, mm. uh, Imperial Aura owners. And Kim Bailey yesterday, we spoke to him. He said this yeah, was Yeah, he said they felt it really strongly. Again, Fergal O'Brien was really bullish in the, in the racing post this morning about it as well. Um... Doesn't seem to be getting an awful lot of love in the market, but you could arguably say that about everything. It's you know seven of field, isn't it? So, yeah. So uh, the other yeah, horse I want to ask you about, Kills. Cool. You fancied this for the Greatwood. He turns up here instead in yeah. his Fergus Gillard, David Pipe, and main yeah, fact. Yeah, he's got conditions in his favour. I just started to think, well, hang on a minute. You know, he's done all that winning, but now his hurdles mark is now very high, isn't it? 147, I think it is. Um, but he has got Fergus Gillard on. He's decent and. If he gets the three mile, which he looks like he's screaming out for, he will be staying on late, that's for sure. No, he's, it, look, this is an absolute rock and roll. There's quite a bit of cash for, uh, for Kalashnikov, I'm noting at decent prices. Oh, oh, top weight Kalashnikov, <laughs> something of forgotten horse. You're laughing there, Alan Conway. Has he come right in? No, the one for money is Highland Hunter, who's going to go off five on the Betfair oh, exchange. Yeah. 7.4 now. Oh. And then third win at 7.8. So, yeah, a late move for Sean Bones now. 7.6 currently. If you were auditioning for a job at Betfair, you've just failed, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you've got the wrong gap. <laughs> Kalashnikov's gone from 46 into 20s. Yeah, yeah. He's going to hose yeah. up now. You know what happens on this show. You've got time. So it looks like Highland Hunter. Oh, I thought he was going to take a break there. Uh, it's Sean Bowen on for Highland Hunter. Oh, he's one of these horses. He hasn't quite met expectations as far as he, he's running around a bit at the start. You've got a minute or two if you want to get a couple more on side or indeed lay a few as well. Great to have you out there. We 
know you're loving the show. Feedback always appreciated. If you're watching on YouTube, like and subscribe. That's the way of the day or Facebook Live. Welcome back to the show. We are three races in this will be. We've got another five coming for you after this. We're off there at the 350, the bumper. Tricky bumper at Ascot, but it's been won by some pearls. Off we go and running then in the stairs, Andy Cap. Well, I'll hand it over to Ross Brady for the call. <laughs> I've been saving that one up. Oh, I love it. <laughs> this will test him. This will test him. Oh, I genuinely am. Oh, right. yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Three, Klein three and Holstone, isn't it? Not Klein and Holstone? Correct. Yeah, we've, got a, we've got a secret commentator in Kills. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm trying to help. Well, I can't find the words in between. Yeah, it is, the yeah. Klein, Dolphin Square <laughs> on the inside, Holstone, and we've got uh, we've got Highland Hunter in just behind there as well. Uh, we've also got Flash Jack uh, at wide. Uh, and uh, just looking at the at the back, just the tenor who came from last to first last time at air is uh, is trying to do the same thing. So uh, out in front, yeah, Klein, Dolphin Square, Holstone, uh, then just even behind, what have we got? Imperial Alcazar down the inside. Dylan on, in fourth, is it? That's Dylan, yeah. Who dares done. wins? Uh, third wind is uh, about what we're talking about ninth or tenth, I think. It completely disappeared out of view uh, as the camera angle now switches, but not that much uh, better with the uh, the fog. But just trying to see what's racing wide as well. Quite a few of them uh, racing wide. They don't seem to be going again, a mad gallop, but then the pace collapsed in the last race and they didn't seem to be either. So the conditions obviously coming into uh, into play. Out the uh, the back, uh, Relegate is racing wide with main fact. And then uh, as a Kalashnikov, just the tenor, and west to the bridge is uh, right out the back here. So quite hard to work out what's going on here, uh, gents, but um, quite a few of these... Uh, uh, making a point of interest to, uh, to race off the rail. Yeah, it's tricky visibility up there at the moment. Well done, Ross. I threw you an absolute curve ball there. You batted it out of the park <laughs> as usual. Uh, Paul Keeley, amazing this race, the strength of it. We didn't even mention who dares wins before, Ant. No, we didn't, no. Royal Ascot winner, winner over fences, hurdles, uh, the lot. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Lovely horse. Does he want three mile on every ground? Didn't get home in the pretense, did he? But, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, wouldn't be for me. I was just going to say, the money for Kalashnikov was quite interesting. I mean, it's it funny, if, if it was the old fixed brushes, I'd have been quite interested. It, because it lends some of these, itself to chasers, Some of these chasers tend, to, you know, tend to, to do it really well. But again, it's a, it's a funny race to find out whether he stays three mile in, isn't it? You know? Yeah, well, we're going out onto mm. the far side. Then let's go to Alan Conway, see if there's been any spikes or ripples in the market. Oh, there is Alan looking studiously <laughs> at the control. We'll get him back. A few gremlins in the <laughs> this system. This might be my chance to get that job now. I, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, he was yeah, a bit worried about, about actually me throwing the commentary to him by any yeah. chance. He pulled the plug. Ha okay. Highland Hunter's gone. Uh, is five to one favoured in the uh, the run. Imperial Alcazar's eight point two as his third wind. Uh, Kalashnikov shortened up a bit as has Dolphin Square. The Jam Man's drifted out and Relegate's drifted out because, as you said, uh, Dave, that, uh, Relegate has not been jumping at all. Uh, is uh, has only got three behind it and uh, and is uh, and is wide and doesn't seem to be enjoying this whatsoever. Uh, relegates come off the bridle already. So big ask for that. Uh, Klein, Imperial Alcazar, Highland Hunter, Holstone, uh, as he said, and then Allen Selection, Dolphin Square, down the rail in about fifth. And a good time to go back to Dublin. What's been going on in the market, Alan Conway? Highland Hunter, it's 6.0, Fav, currently at the moment. Um, Imperial Alcazar at 6.8. Third wind, 8.4. And it's pretty much static for the rest. But um, yeah, punters just keeping their powder a little bit dry, obviously, with the conditions the way they are. So the market can hot up even more, I'd, I'd say, when, once they turn out of the back straight. Good to have you back, Alan. And thank you, Paul Kelly. A couple that have caught my eye in the run. Flash Jack uh, for Henry Daly, of course, who had a big winner at the October. Yeah, he's been on the outside all, right, all, all the way, going well. Yeah, he's, uh, a, he's a definite stay, um, isn't he? Flash just behind him, Kaluni's sort of moved up. Ah, a few places first mention well. for Kaluni. Yeah. Happy days. The grey creeping into contention. Upsize thirds wind as well. What about Imperial Alcazar kills as well? He's taking his enthusiastic grip is what I'd say. Yeah, yeah. And whether we whether we will pay for that late on, we shall have to wait and see. But he's in you know he's in a nice position if he hasn't done too much too soon. Let's go back to Ross Briley then. As they go into the gloom, if you can see it, then you're a better man than I am. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going. I'm just trying the to only one you can recognise is Klein. It's Klein Turns yeah. out he's not. <laughs> let's look for the two. Let's look for the white caps. We've got Klein and Foberg and Rosegri. I can definitely see, but. Uh, in front, yeah, Imperial Alcazar is coming to uh, to take it up now, but that wasn't a great jump. There's also a little bit of a mistake from Who Dares wins out the back. The Jam Man uh, also not entirely fluent there. Klein, Imperial Alcazar, Dolphin Square, Holstone, Astilla, not a great deal of change, uh, but uh, Relegate is hating every second of this and has been relegated to last. Uh, Highland Hunter wide on the outside. Klein's come off the bridle now as well. Imperial Alcazar is still there. Flash like who Dares wins, getting win. a shake as he is well. I'll tell you what, Kaluni is going well, Kills. He is going well, yeah. 
Yeah, well, I mean, you know, as well. What's I, would, I would hope my horse is still going well when they haven't turned it to the straight, to be honest. But <laughs> some of them are. <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. Relegate's Clive. been pulled up. Relegate pulled up out okay, of the Okay, first time cheap pieces, she just doesn't uh, like yeah, that. And Kaluni has just come under, as I said, so he isn't going well turning it to the straight. Okay, where do you want to be here, Giles? Call the winner, Ross Bride. Who's going to take this out? I'm trying to find third win, but I'm, uh, third wind is oh, swinging third wind along. Is swinging He's along, absolutely yes. coming into it. Third wind's going to go favourite, I think, in a second. Kirill Alcazar takes it up, then turning in. Lots of them the Hunter was built, beaten. There's a, yeah, there's yeah. a lot. There's lots Dolphin Square there. going up and down. I'll tell you what, I third wind is going absolutely yeah. beautifully. Going to need so some got, luck, Ross Briney. We've got <laughs> Imperial Alcazar Holston. Here comes uh, Ask Dylan. Uh, third wind Highland Hunters into it as well. Yeah. Uh, we've it's also like, got uh, West of the Bridge coming into it late yes. on as well through the uh, through the pack. And Ask Dylan, Imperial Alcazar jumps into the lead and goes on. Well, one's and we gone. lose Holstone there. I think Holstone unseated his rider there. Imperial Alcazar Highland Hunter. Uh, down this Nissan, is that Kalashnikov trying to stay on there? It is. Conditions, it is conditions are awful. Yeah, it is, it is, it is. Something's on the bottom. Is that third wind in my Third wind, still, he's still trying to smuggle third wind. Come on, it? let's get a run then, John and Joe. Because our third wind is travelling like an absolute dream. And he's going to go oh, on to win a second. Come on, you need some luck here. Ideal conditions, though. Is he going to get a run? He's uh, got a run. He's tailing off a little bit. He's uh, got inside again. In front as they jump the final. What's he doing on this? Third wind is still smuggling. It's not finding anything. Third and this is main fact flying around the outside. Wow, well, you don't want to be getting main like fact first run. Does. Main fact down the This is going to take it out, well. Kills. Main fact coming up to take main it up. Main fact, fact and winning run is wow. continuing for Fergus Gillard. And another win in this race for David Pipe as uh, main fact uh, goes on to score very takingly indeed. Uh, third wind gets into second place but has run into a winning machine, Highland Hunter and Ask Dylan. But uh, main fact just... Can't stop yeah. winning. Can't stop winning. That's nine on the spin. Wow. Uh, well, uh, we'll have a little crunch the numbers, just exactly how much has improved. They were going to go for the Greatwood. We thought at Cheltenham last weekend. They've saved him for this. Absolutely on the money. Alan Conway, what on earth happened on the, ups in the, on the exchange in the home straight? I was fairly surprised when I looked at it. Main, main fact, just hit a high of 14.5 on the, on the Betfair exchange. So I, I, I was surprised. I thought it'd be a little bit higher now, given given the nature of the race, but um, I'm not sure if they, did they go off too quick in the end and, and they've just paid for going, going that shade too quick. He came from fair way off, didn't he? But as you said, it's just... Yeah, did they ever look to be going that hard? Did, did, did no, they, they didn't. It just, oh, so, yeah. it just is hard work. It, it, where it you is. are, if you don't stay, you know, look at third wind, he just stopped. He, you know, he just did not get home. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, that is true, but I mean, every, I mean, you, you can... Gonna crab every horse at Main Facts beaten in the past eighteen months with that with, with similar comments because the horse just yeah finds yeah, yeah. tons for he pressure. finds loads and he stays obviously extremely extremely. Do you well. know he's yeah. eight from fourteen now over hurdles. This is an old school mm. pipe type performer, isn't it? The, I mean, the, Diane, the, Diane the public Sayer, it's been livid. <laughs> How much was it? Eight grand was it? I think. <laughs> 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 He picked it up of Diane Sayer, of course. Yeah. Oh, poor Diane Sayer. He had a three mile hurdle that Harry, Fly Harry Fly's got. You know what I mean, Harry? You know what I mean, Harry? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, another one. Similar type. What a breeding yeah. ground then at Diane Sayer's, absolutely. Yeah. I don't, uh, but again, I mean. We, we, no, that was uh, Helen Nelmer's, but I mean, it was rated right 120. Of course, it was. Again, this race, and David, you've got Dinas Grand Crew, Jevry Chambaton. I mean. If we get a downpour in the uh, the stayers hurdle in, in March, he might be involved because oh, he's he's just cle oh. he's clearly a soft ground well, horse. Well, let's actually take that seriously, Kills. A seven year old, rising eight year old. Do they now have to go to? I mean, what other staying handicaps do we really have? You know, bar the you know, it, but the potents is. Well, really he's one now. He probably that? goes up seven, one five four. You're borderline graded. You uh, and you stay absolute miles. You might as well go for the long walk at Ascot. Might you? Yeah. You might as well run in it. Yeah, and well, you, it should get the conditions as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's going to be bottomless ground, uh, and that takes a lot of getting at Ascot, doesn't it? So, mm. you know, you remember Rev de, uh, um, de Silva? Yeah, Rev de Silva. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know, Zarkand, I don't know. Yeah, forever, was, like, yeah. You know I mean, just, you, and he might just eight, outstay horses. Well, I mean, and you know what? I mean, Harry as well won that race in, in fog mm. and terrible yeah, ground exactly, from yeah. the back. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's a proper stayer. Um, you know, he's still young enough to, you know, and he obviously is still improving. His first win for Pipe came off a mark of 104. Yeah. Yeah. Is, yeah. Is yes, he was rated 98 when he joined him, wasn't he? Wow. Well, so you know, 43 pounds thus far. How much more has Main Fat got? Did you see him coming in the run? I didn't. 
I, I, I mean, I, I, I saw halfway up the run. Did, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, absolutely. So yeah. It, it was a tricky one. I'm glad um, we mentioned him beforehand, though, because you Simon did like Holt him for the great. Richard Hoyles have got nothing to worry about. Really. <laughs> no, well, perhaps not. Perhaps not. Just as you think you'll get close to one of the great guys. Uh, some disappointments in there, weren't there? Indeed. Let's talk about uh, third win before we move back to Ascot. There's got to be a big race. Could we go Coral Cup with this? Chap yeah. Now? Well, you've got to drop him in Chip, haven't you? He doesn't stay. He, he was either absolutely cruising. Look, he either he? doesn't stay or he doesn't he doesn't want to do anything at the end of it. Yeah. Um, but I just think that was a case of not staying. Uh, and I think the jockey probably knew that he was holding on to nothing. Because we were wondering why he wasn't yeah. Yeah. quite going for it. I, I think yeah. you've been a tad harsh given the fact that I mean, he's finished sec- he's finished clear of the rest, but I think if Bain Fat goes and wins uh, in grade you know, grade two, maybe grade one company, might we you are be looking, looking back at the contempt winner. Again, we had, he had no chance in hindsight. Yeah, but I mean, he's still got three other horses in front of him as well, hasn't he? Like, you know, that that have gone away from him. You know? oh, sorry, uh, third wind. Finished second. No, he didn't. It's fifth. Was he second? It was fifth, wasn't he? Yeah, he's second. Was second. Yeah, yeah. I was, was second. second. Yeah. Oh, right. apologies. Yeah. What was fifth? West of the Bridge. Oh, Some that was, I don't know. I mean, it was murky kills, but yeah. I know you were looking for Kaluni, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely not getting a job as a commentator. <laughs> I was <laughs> absolutely convinced. And you were fit. starting to fancy yourself a little bit as well. I thought you were being a bit hard. Oh, no, well, he's, running, he's, running right. he's running an absolute cracker then. Apologies for that. This is what you get on this show. If I can tell you, watching Ross Briley's face there, I was like, Ross was like, well, what did he? Okay, so we, I think oh, we did get the wrong. results up on the screen, but uh, we've got to go to Ascot. We've got to move on much to Kills' pleasure, because we have got the coral hurdle coming up. Just the three runners, right. would you believe it? I won't get a second wrong in this race, I promise. Well, <laughs> there is, I don't know. Okay, Alan Conway, 240, coral uh, ascot hurdle. What have we got going on in the market? Is it all about Lorena? She's not as strong as I thought she would be. She's 2.34 currently on the Betfair Exchange. Call me Lord of Three, and then Son for Someone at 3.9. It's just 322,000 matched on the Betfair Exchange. As we were talking earlier, Lorena on her day is a, is a very, very good horse. But for me, there's just too many question marks about her. She bombed out in the, the, the champion hurdle. She had a interrupted campaign last year. She'd switched trainers. She's had a wind up. There has been issues of her bursting blood vessels in the past. So with all that in mind, I'm just going to have a straight lay bet on her. A 25 lay bet on Lorena. And I'm not too sure who of the other two may win. But with everything that... I know about Lorraine at the moment. I couldn't be backing her, so hopefully we, we, we can take her on. We're matched. Matched 2.46, so yeah, uh, £36.50 uh, liability for uh, for potential 25 quid profit. Thank you, Ross Briley. Thank you, Alan Conway. Paul Keeley, come to you. She's not been beaten the first time out in her career. No, I mean, it's, this is sort of, you know, in, in form terms, it's shades of surname. Uh, running in the, in, in the Charlie Hall. A horse on all known form is an odds-on shot. Uh, and Lorena, at her best, she's, she has the same official rating as the other two, and they're giving her thirteen pound. Uh, so she's absolutely lobbed in at the weights, but none of us trust her. She bled three times last year. I actually never thought she was as good as everyone thought she was, anyway. Uh, yeah. But in pure form terms, uh, she's got an absolute monster chance, and she should be shorter than she is. Yeah. So from a form, so for for people out there thinking, how do I play this? And I don't, you know, I think Lorena probably, you know, the move to Nichols, fresh first time out as the angle, had the wind up. When how, when what might they get involved in, in, in you know, in this race? Would the, is, is she an in running? Well, well, I don't know because she's not going to make it because Song for Someone will definitely make it. Right, so she's going to sit off, and you've got to remember, Call Me Lord is a traveller. So it's not like she, I don't think she's going to look like she's traveling over everything a long way out. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> you know, if you're waiting, uh, the price may go against you before you can do anything about it. But, but she might also fall apart before you can do anything about it. Yeah. As well. I, think, I, I think Song for Summer's the value here. I think he's a young, improving horse. He, he probably has a bit to find. Um, but Tom Simmons is absolutely flying, isn't he? Uh, and I just like, I just do like this horse. One five-year-old has won it in the last 10 years, happened to be Annie Power. That's the sort of horse that we're associating with these races often, uh, Ross. W- which way did you play? Uh, I'm same as Paul. I think, I mean, a, a cracking uh, back to lay at the very least for, some, for someone because as I say, he's a guaranteed front runner, um, you know, proven in these conditions. The yard are in fantastic form. They had a winner earlier on this afternoon. Um, and this horse, you know, has got a couple of years on the other two as well. We don't quite know how good he is. Um, conditions are absolutely spot on. This track can suit horses who get loose on the lead over hurdles, so uh, it, it will certainly, you know, play into his strengths. Um, 
I agree. I think Lorena, you know, hadn't switched yards, might well be odds on, but you've got to take that into account, especially the way Real Steel ran earlier on. And on the line through Thomas Darby, he hasn't got that much to find with Cormie Lord. So as a progressive five-year-old, a front runner who will just, he's, just basically get the race run to suit. He's gutsy as well. Yeah. You watched that race at uh, Kempton that he won. They're not, nearly he never off. looked like winning that all, all the way up the straight. He's just nearly off. Down. You know sometimes you just get horses Well, this is wrong. a three-runner race. They might actually be off. I'm, I'm, on, <laughs> I'm on Call Me Lord, just in case anyone wants to know. Uh, I'm on Call Me Lord. Um, mm. I like Ron, he's very talented. I, think it, it, I just still don't know how he got beaten in this race Well, last I year. think sometimes he's soft. Well, he probably is a little bit soft, isn't he? But they said he couldn't go left hand and he goes and wins oh, at the, at the, the national, trials yeah. meeting on his first run at Cheltenham, didn't he? Off and running we go then, I'm happy to take the commentary here. If I'm <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> song Thanks, for Dad. someone bounces off into the lead for Tom Simmons. He's having a really good season. Did he have a winner earlier, Kills, as well? In the he, first did, race he, at he had a winner in the first race at Haydock. He's obviously, um, he's had Cyclop come out and win two races on the spin, one over hurdles, one over fences. Got a lot of the old they, Dave they, Dennis they horses, isn't Dave Dennis, well, he, who is his assistant now. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, they, you know, going really well. Um, horse, he's a lovely horse. He's a, he's a good jumper. Uh, we just have to see. He's going up against the big boys now. This will be the toughest race he's been in. Yeah, he's got Nico de Boinville on top. He's got the right jockey for these tactics as well, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of in terms of timing it out in front, there's uh, there's not that many uh, better. So yeah, yeah. Uh, he's got a, got every chance. Obviously, like you said, it's a bit like Imperial. Uh, or earlier on, in the sense that has to to step up in class, but is the one horse in this race where you can see that improvement coming? So it's certainly yeah. not without question. But what a fascinating race we have in store! So Lorena takes the stalking role in second, and I think this will suit Call Me Lord to not have to attack that soon with a couple of positive runners in there. Daryl Jacob uh, taking the ride on him and just steaming away to watching him over there. Nice neat jump from him in third. Alan Conway. Full of anything happened? Is there in the market? Full of himself, yeah, Lorena. Lovely job cool. that was. Yeah, it's quite enough at the moment, Dave. 2.3 Lorena, 2.88 Call Me Lord, and 4.1 Song for Someone. So very much like the race. Punters are keeping their, their powder dry until it hots up, probably just coming out of the swindly bottom. He has got himself into a nice little rhythm, hasn't he? Do, do you know, I don't want to... I don't want to pour cold water on this. I couldn't associate... Uh, Nico de Boinville with this horse, Call Me Lord. Uh, a, a song for someone, sorry. Looks, he's never in it before. It's actually naught from 11 for Tom Simmons here, so he's hoping to get a first winner off the board as well. He's taking a keen tug, Kills, but you're not too disappointed about oh, that. I don't, I don't need so much of a tug. He's a, he's a natural front runner anyway. Um, I think he's I think he's at the right trip. trip. He definitely wants more than two miles. I don't think he's too keen at all, no. Do you think he might be a sitting duck at this point, or is he... Well, I mean, any front, any, any front runner is a sitting duck, isn't it? It just depends on whether they can catch him or not, but... Uh, um, yeah, I can't be anything other than happy with the way he's going at the moment. He's jumped every hurdle perfectly. Lorena looks a little bit keen to me, but she mm. flew that one. Yeah, she's, she's, she, she, she took a couple of hurdles to warm into it. Obviously, this is a, you know, a bit of a different discipline than what she was, um, what she was doing for most of the last season. So uh, it's obviously, she is racing a bit fresh, as Real Steel did earlier on. So again, a lot of these horses uh, that have switched uh, over to Paul Nichols have, have, have raced very similarly. And that first time wind up as well, it, it, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, if you remember, she raced, lot, she raced that keenly in the champion hurdle, but when they actually quickened the pace, she, she just stopped. She, she, yeah. It was too bad yeah. to be true, though, yeah. that kills, wasn't it, perhaps? And again, like as, as Kills alluded to, she has had a few problems as well, debuting for Paul Nichols then. So, getting towards the business end now, Swindley Bottom we're coming to, and Song for Someone still going really well within himself. Lorena, absolutely full of running, taking a massive tug there, is Call Me Lord as well. He's got plenty of running in him. Ross Briley. As I say, we should, we should probably go over to Alan, because it's a very interesting market at the moment. It's uh, You could have you could have probably um, traded your way out of every runner so far, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Call Me Lord um, was just favouring. Now, song for someone at 3.0, Call Me Lord 3.15, and Lorena t in the 2.64. He's running away with Nico here. He's got loads left in him, hasn't he? But Call Me Lord is starting to be a little bit alive to the move. Uh, and Lorena, all runners still going well. There's perhaps three runners, but they're all classy sorts. Paul Kelly? Well, you expect them to be going well when there's a three runner race because they probably haven't done too much. Uh, and again, it all depends on who's going to be fastest at the end. He's just trying to wind it up a little bit now on Song for Someone, uh, and we'll see what that does to the two behind. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how the fitness edge plays out as well, because obviously races so far today, we've seen horses who've had uh, runs who've, uh, who've kind of dominated. It certainly helped Imperial 
uh, all earlier on. It helped me, in fact, in the last race. But yeah, I think Lorena is struggling. We yeah. are turning in, this and Lorena yeah. is having a little fill. Song for someone, definitely the one to catch. He's the last of the bridle. Call me a lord, just being asked to pick him up. There's nothing between them it's, at the weights. Here is, we go, two out. This is his race, song for someone, because he finds plenty. He if he's fit, he's going to be. Call me lord's going to need to ping this. He's got lots left in him. Oh, he does indeed. Again. There's a lovely jump by the leader. Song for someone. Come on, Paul Keeley. Have you finally got a winner on the live show? Hi, hi. Here we go. Call me lord. He said he was soft before, and he's having a little think about it. Lorena has gone. Alan Conway's got that absolutely. Right, final oh, three. Hey, we're going to yeah, as well. Paul yeah, Keeley's got a winner on the yeah, line, show. Yeah. Hey, Happy hey, days, hey, aye, hey. aye. All is good with the world again. He will be back at some point. We were fearing for him. Song for someone, you've got it absolutely right. Nico de Boinville, perfectly timed ride. Call me Lord, a little bit soft there. He is a little bit soft, isn't he? I mean, I, I fell for him big time last year. I mean, I backed him in the international. Then I convinced myself that he was going to get in the frame at the very least in the champion hurdle. And yeah, I just think he's a little bit. He's a little bit on the soft side. I think he wants it absolutely bottomless as well. Let's take nothing away from the winner, though, Ross. He didn't stop at all, did he? No, I mean, we said before the race that this horse is going to be uh, primed perfectly the way this is going to unfold. And I mean. If you've backed a, a small field front runner like that, mm. uh, never at any point were you uh, were you unhappy. You were, you were watching that race, thinking These are, this is going perfectly. He hurdled wonderfully. He yeah. was a little bit fresh early on, but again, he's, he's racing out on his own. It's his first run of the season. It's no great surprise. But the yard horses as well are finding finding tons for pressure. I mean, the uh, the two jumps down the home the, down the home straight were, were were a joy to behold. And Lorena, as Alan called uh, um, for for all the uh, the switches um, worth a lay at the uh, the prices, she's not looked the same horse she did two years ago. No, um, no, no. That's but it was it was. I mean, it was possibly the easiest winner we're going to see all day. Really, never. Yeah, never, it was never, never in any danger. Jumped jumped every hurdle absolutely perfectly. Uh, he's beaten one horse that's gone and another horse that's not that interested. I think the couple of shows you've been having. If you if you're just <laughs> tuning in, last week wasn't too kind to kills on the Sunday, but uh, you, you oh, kind of had a few near misses. Not too kind. No, it was awful last <laughs> Sunday. And there weren't any near misses last Sunday. Not too kind. Absolute she was scandalously show. cruel. But um, <laughs> but uh, we, but so at that point, as a punter, you think to yourself, something's going to go wrong here. Or were you just? Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you know, when you, you when when you like I say, you can't help but have negative thoughts, even when it's going so well. I know when you're saying, "Come on, shout!" I mean, the last thing I wanted, I actually wanted to do, <laughs> and I don't even, I don't consider myself remotely superstitious. But the last thing I wanted to do was give it a great big oi oi before it got <laughs> over the line. The one, yeah, two, yeah, three, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Through the wings. The gossip, yeah, right. Yeah, well, I don't want to do a Millington either. No, 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 <laughs> quite right. Who, well, who does? I'm quite enough trouble for swearing. Yeah. It, is, it is on Twitter. So, Alan Conway, <laughs> let's go to you. You got it right uh, with Lorena. Uh, did the, did, did the, was the market alive to this? win a song for someone being the last off the bridle into the home straight it was song for someone hit a high of five in the in the run the interesting call me lord hit, hit even money i think maybe just coming to maybe to the second last punters yeah. maybe, maybe maybe thinking that he might just be able to go by song for someone but um yeah it was it was disappointing from Lorena, wasn't it it's a shame because at one point she looked like a a, a very good horse and it's just it's clearly clearly gone backwards so back to the drawing board for connections yeah, it's probably the I mean, physical side of The thing about you in running punters, you've got your professional in running punters and you've got your people who play at it and they love a traveller, don't they? Oh, yes. yes. You know what yeah. I mean? The they love, yeah. yes, they love yeah. the traveller. I can see that was, that was going well ages ago. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah. You have to, you have to reprogram your brain, especially, especially in Ireland in bad ground. The amount of times you go, God, crikey, that's travelling well. I remember when I first got into it, the amount of people who would uh, stand over my shoulder and go, that one's travelling, and they'd be like, you yeah, but yeah. we don't want to. We don't yeah. want to touch those. Yeah. Don't ever touch those. <laughs> right, I see. Absolutely. What will they find? Call me Lord. A tad soft. Is that a little bit harsh? Were you with Keels and Ross Bridley there? Ross Bridley. Good afternoon, Ross. Three winners in a second. I'll take it. Oh, just uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> last, last time we give him the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that bet fair interview is going mm. a little bit better now. Oh, I don't it's going to go down the hill now. As soon as you as soon as you mention it, it's um, <laughs> sod's law is the biggest thing in in playing, isn't it? Don't, don't forget. Do gamble safely. It's a safe gambling week. It is indeed. Don't have to play in every race. I found that. I, I sat that race out. I was with Call Me Lord and just. By default, really. Mm. Uh, we've got to build up, of course, to the big one now, the three o'clock. Is it all about the big three in the market? Lost in translation last year's winner. Bristol Demai, last year's second, won it the two previous years. King George winner, Clanders Oboe, beaten in 2018 on his return in this race by Bristol Demai. Or do we give a bit of love to Bells Hill, former 
Very good horse for Willie Mullins, debuting now for Sandy Thompson, or indeed Keeper Hill, who saw the backside of Seer Name and Vindication and I right in the Charlie Hall last time, because it is the bet fair chase, three o'clock. Let's get to the market, and Alan Conway. Yeah, it's a fascinating race, isn't it? We have Lost in Translation at 2.8. Bav, Clannazobo and Bristol might have been flip-flopping between second and third favouritism. Clannazobo is now second favourite at 3.55. And Bristol Demai, he'll love the conditions, won't he? At 3.65. And then the two outsiders, Bells Hill, 17.5. And Keeper Hill at 28, with just 1.93 million matched on the Betfair Exchange at the moment. We'll, what, nine minutes to the post line? It's a, it's a fascinating race, isn't it? Obviously, the conditions have come for, for Bristol Demai. He'll love the, the track, the ground, er, everything is in his favour. Lost in translation last year's winner is obviously a, a very, very good horse. And Colin Tizard is coming back to somewhat of his, his best form. Clamazobo is interesting, isn't he? He's He normally needs the, the first run of his, his campaign, but Nichols has been, I would say, maybe unusually bullish in his in, in the build-up to this race. He said he's hard fit for this race and that it's not a prep for the King George. This is the race that he that he wants to win. He's had such a good record with, obviously with the likes of Cardo Starr. Um, it's going to be tactically fascinating, isn't it? Similarly to last year, you can see Lost in Translation coming there, swinging on the bridle with, with Clamazobo and maybe just kind of out battling Bristol the So I'm going to stick with Clan de Zobo. I'm going to have a £30 win on him to bag another Betfair chase for our Betfair ambassador, Paul Nichols. Yes, indeed. Paul will be up there, of course. Barry Orr up there. I bet he's loving life, Barry Orr up there at the moment. Alan Conway loving life on the show. Going for Clan Des Obo. Is that on, Ross? It is indeed. 3.55 match, 30 quid to win £76.50. What's the liquidity on this market, Alan? I'm sure that this is probably the most popular race of the day, isn't it? Yeah, we're up to 1.979 million on the on the Betfair exchange. I think I checked around 11.30 this morning, it was 1.3. So these markets are always are always hugely popular and you can see why it's with three crackerjack chasers going head to head. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do, do you know what? I was driving into the studio yesterday um, doing a few bits and I, I had my first radio advert for a horse race that I can remember in years. And it was Betfair had done, a, 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 I think I was listening to Jazz FM or something like that. It came up and it was a great advert all about this race. It is a great race, Paul, isn't it? Yes, yeah, a brilliant race. Yeah, it's only been going for 15 years. And look at the winners we've had: Auto Star, Four, Silvianico, Three, Silvianico, Conti, Two, Imperial Commander. You know, it's, it's just an amazingly good race. And obviously, we've had Bristol de Myers won two of them, uh, and Lost in Translation won the last one. I must admit, I look at this race, and every time I look at this race, I change my mind. Yes, yes. <laughs> it is, Which is exactly what you want to hear it, out there, isn't it? It is one of those. I, I covered it for the weekend earlier in the week, and I said, well, look, the way I'm looking at it is it'll go like last year. Lost in Translation will outspeed Bristol to my... Gladys Obo will need it. Now, Paul Nichols comes out, and he says, well, actually, he's a lot fitter this year. Uh, and then you think, well, hang on a minute. I must, you know, Gladys Obo's quite a big price, isn't he, if he's, if he's ready? And then it lashes down with rain. <laughs> uh, and you think, hang on a minute, this is Bristol to my conditions, isn't yes. it? Yes. Uh, and his trainer, of course, says, well, actually, he had he had uh, an interrupted prep for the race last year, and he's bang on ready for it this year. And he has lost one race in his life at Haydock. Uh, that was lost in translation last year when the ground yeah. wasn't as deep as it is now. Uh, again, he's going to be, you know, he's almost certainly going to be up there making the running. Nigel Twist and Dave so come right back I've, and forth, isn't he? <laughs> I've come down on Bristol Demai in the end. Uh, and I think I I think I actually put a play spot perm up in the racing post and my two were lost in translation of Gladys Obo. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so three-way dead. Three yeah, 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 given those conditions. Um, so um, if you're sitting at home watching this, have a little reverse forecast on Bells Hill and Keeper Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> Keels. OK, uh, it's amazing what a winner does to your mind. It clearly clouds it, doesn't it? Um, Ross Briley. I, I just can't. It's, it's partly head, but it's also quite a bit of heart with Lost in Translation. I, I, I just absolutely love this horse. I love the way he jumps. I love the way he travels. Um, you know, conditions are absolutely. I was very much like that with him last year. Yeah, he's just—he yeah. is a really take it individual. Yeah, he is mm. definitely. Can um, I ask you about heavy ground for him? If we're thinking it probably is riding near heavy now. Um, he's had two runs on heavy. Uh, admittedly, um, he was. It, it looked like it was early in his career, actually, didn't it? Mm. And Cheltenham, it, uh, of course. God, can you believe that was heavy? That that Sky Bet Supreme. Uh, that was won by. Uh, Somerville Boy, wasn't it, in 2018? And in first flow at this track, actually, ran on heavy in the Washington Mind Train in January. So, look, soft ground's fine. First time out, though, on heavy, would that be something? 
Well, I mean, a lot of connoisseurs' horses needed the run, but the further you get into the season, the less likely they are going to need mm. it, aren't they? Because they've just been in, in the stable. They've got remarkable facilities, yeah. obviously, at these big yards, so you shouldn't need to worry about needing the run. Um, he does need to be spot on against two horses that are said to be fit. He's, he's, he's got a bit of, you know... He's, he's probably got more improvement in him than the other two. I've yeah. put him up just because oh. I just think, I think with another year on Bristol's back, and I just hope that he... Do you know what I like about Lost in Translation? He came back and answered so many questions mm. in the Gold Cup, yes. didn't he? It was Where a, it was he looked like he was going to win for a long way. It was yes. an absolute blinding run, and he's run up yeah. against two horses with, with proper Cheltenham yeah. form. Um, and, you know... A couple of times you've seen him at Cheltenham and he's been beaten by horses who were be probably better suited to the track. Uh, but in this race last year, like I said, he, he, he travelled up. He came off the bridle. You thought, oh, crikey, Bristol on the bridle. We know he finds at this track. Is Lost in Translation going to find? Right. And he, he did exactly that and he just kept grinding. So he jumps, he travels, he finds. I agree the ground is a slight question mark. Do you I, take it that he didn't quite stay in the Gold Cup? I th possibly. It, it, I, it's become a brutal staying race, yeah. hasn't it? Is, is know, Alpha a, is just uh, not Alpha. Uh, who's the last one? I thought it was Alpha. 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 The one you I to say Alpha to Zobo, about six months. I know. Advance. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do love the horse so much yeah. that I don't know his name. I thought I, I, I thought it was quite steadily run last year, wasn't it? Uh, you, you've got to be a proper stayer now. You've got to be a proper stayer. Sizing saying, John was a bit. This of a, is this is three mile one and a half furlong, and it's going to be a slog. Yeah. A he, proper he slog. Got, he got beat by two two genuine Cheltenham horses as well, an album photo and Santini, and like I said, I think that. That, that experience of getting up the mm. hill at Cheltenham does does, mm. uh, does really count for a lot. Santini's so, yeah. got a bit quiet again, hasn't it? Absolutely. Not, not, I haven't heard too much about him at the minute, but we've got all these big horses to come out. We're, we're, uh, Alan Conway... Yeah, um, he looked slow as a boat in a gallop, didn't he? It, yes, and, and again, that, again, like they, were, wool. they were these gallops, of course, at Newbury in the week. Uh, with Epitante galloped all over uh, Altior, of course, and there were some others that went out as well. And he didn't go quite as well as planned, but that, that will kind of be him as well. Let's go to Alan Conway then, as they come out onto the track, the proper Grade One stairs. We know you've got loads of viewers out there. Like and subscribe if you're on YouTube or indeed on Facebook. Keep with us. This is going to be some watch here on Racing Post Live. Alan Conway, who's going to go off clear fav? Lost in translation was, is going to go off clear far for this year's edition of the Betfair Chase. Currently 2.88 on the Betfair Exchange. Bristol Demai, slight drift at 3.45. Clan Mazobo, tightening up a shade at 3.55. And then Bell Hill, 19.5. And then Keeper Hill, the outsider, at 29. Oh. With just nearly 2.3 million matched on the Betfair Exchange. But Lost in oh, translation. Two rags, surprisingly short. I was just going to say, they're, they're <laughs> half the price they were <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> That's, co that's, that's caused yeah. riots of scenes here on the panel. What? I mean, so, I know, I mean, I'm a expecting friend, 33s and... A friend 50s. of mine is adamant that Keeper Hill was going to run a big race, and I said to him, this will go off 85 on, on, on Betfair. But well, you've got, right, a, you, it, you've got a £5 pound free yeah, bet, of I course, don't... for Betfair, haven't we, Alan, on this race? Perhaps the way to, to throw that is to be... You know, Keeper Hill won't mind the ground at all. He stays all day. Bells Hill was a serious horse on his day. He, he was indeed, isn't it? It's going to be a, a cracking race. And just as I say, last in translation, a slight drift. Now out to three, and a little bit of money coming from Bristol to my into 3.25 as we just build up to post line with 2.4 million now matched on the Fascinating Betfair market. That's a lot of money. Oh, come on, it's warming up, isn't it? Who's going to win the Betfair chase? Tough to get your socials in because we're thick and fast, but we know you are out there. The guys in the gallery are reading them with much glee as well. We'll try and get some uh, as many as we can in as the show goes on. Good luck wherever you're playing. We're just watching Puppy Power on... Uh, on Lost in Translation, looks an absolute picture, Ross Briley. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he, well, I mean, in the, in the murk, admittedly, but uh, yeah, he, he is. He, he's a he's a beautiful, strapping, big chaser, isn't he? He's a he's a proper Tizard um, Tizard representative. Uh, yeah. He's got plenty of these kind of runners, and um, yeah, I can't wait to see him uh, see him run. Like I said, the the, the fitness. Edge is, is an interesting angle to this race. Witness um, the fitness. Well, because I mean, the first three in the market are all coming off, you know, the back of absences. And normally you would say, you know, a, a Nichols and a Tizard runner might improve for the run, and a Twist and Davies horse will be ready first time out. But it's not necessarily working well, out. That's that way. the other thing we lost in translation kills, isn't it? He did prep for this at Carlisle. Was that in the same Imperial Aura race? It probably was, wasn't mm. it, I think? Uh, uh, yes, it was, yeah. yeah. Putting yeah, you on yeah, the yeah. spot there. But yeah. he, he is a horse that definitely has improved in the past for a run. Uh, yeah, he has, but I mean, he, he obviously won very easily at Carlisle last year. He, he, they deliberately come here, though. I mean, I yeah. don't see, you know, the flag is up. The, the big stables win this race regularly. 
The flag is up then. It's time for the biggie. And they'll all be fit. Oh, oh I'll tell you what, a bit, I'll tell you what, a bit of a ragged start. because you know, so Winston Davis nearly got thrown off. Yeah, absolutely, because Bristol Demai has tried to open up the lead. Do you remember when he beat Q Card in this? Was it back in 2017? He got a race boys radio 182 with a plus next to it because he tore into a lead and broke their hearts. But, Paul Keeley, Bells Hill is keeping him company. Yeah, I, I, mean, I, think, I, I think he tore, he actually tore apart on the second circuit, didn't he? I don't even think he led on the first circuit that day. Uh, Boring cold water on my, my Yes, I, I think so. I was so, ramping yeah. it up. Come on, stop talking nonsense. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, no, no. I think it's a case of winding it up with a circuit. It's a winding it up with a circuit to go. You never go, to, you never go too fast, too early. Uh, and the jockey knows exactly what he's doing. Knows the horse very well. So. Yeah. Okay, so they've got company up front. Bristol to my backers because uh, Bells Hill is indeed up there. We know he stays strongly. Clanders Oboe, Ross Bells Hill. Be- best form in Bells Hill is not far off these. Uh, well, but he's now a 10 Did he win an Irish national? Uh, was it, was he just touched off he was, one? just got outstayed yeah. in the Irish National, didn't he? But he's a five-time grade one winner himself. Yeah, a very, very good horse when he was in the Wiley Colours. Now with Sandy Thompson. Great trainer, Sandy Thompson. I was going to back him for the Charlie Hall, funny enough. But yeah, I mean, I mean, this is in theory, this is good for Clanders Elbow and Lost in Translation uh, backers because you, you, know, you want one of your main market rivals to be potentially taken out of his comfort zone. Yeah. So the fact that Bell's Hill might be uh, hassling uh, Bristol Demi all the, uh, the way is a, a bonus, but Bristol Line now has jumped into the lead. It's a, that was a... A little, I wouldn't say sketchy jump from Lost in Translation, but uh, it, it looks as like he's smooth getting, as the rest. It looks like he's getting greyer to me. Bristol yeah, well, white. whiter. Whiter. Yeah, whiter. Yeah. <laughs> that does tend to happen with him, doesn't he? What a sight he made at that fence. Oh, yeah. uh, they're all jumping OK. Keeper Hill, I guess, kills. He's just, he's, he's struggling a little bit. Doesn't fancy him much. Oh, well, he's just sitting, I think he's just I think deliberately sitting off and opening to pick up whatever there is left. OK, so we're on the far side. We've got plenty of time left on the, this Betfair chase. And on the inside is Bells Hill cruising along on the first run for Sandy Thompson. As I said, Wine Mania, of course, getting the run. And uh, Bristol Demai eyeballing him and comes up absolutely beautifully, as would expect. They're all jumping really well. Lost in translation kills. Sitting in fourth, got about, what, eight lengths to final Bristol Demai. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, look, 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 they're hacking around the first circuit. I'm not sure I want to be that far off. Um, given the speed they're going, but he's going within himself, all right, and he does come from the back anyway. I was going to say, yeah, he was, um, you know, he made quite a bit of ground in this race last year, so it's not, um, it's not a switch in tactics. It's not necessarily doing anything that he doesn't normally no, do. No, it would worry me on ground like this. Yeah, it only takes one error, and then you can't make the ground up. But I mean, generally, he's a brilliant jumper, isn't he? So. But yeah. if there is a fair old gap between the front two, which makes me yeah. suggest that maybe Bell's Hill is just making Bristol Demai go a bit quicker than he wants to. Well, this is what he did, as Gil suggests, to cue card all those years ago, and he is now trying to kick on a little okay. bit. Yeah, the problem is in this ground, he's so good at it. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. And again, we were talking about the track uh, over fences. You know, the, you can just keep jumping and jumping and jumping, and the horses in behind never get going and, uh, and never get on the other heels of you. We, we might see that in the staying chase later on, which is often dominated by front runners. And Bristol Demise, he's just doing what he tries to do every time in this uh, this race. He's worked a couple of times. He didn't quite work last year. Yeah. So Daryl Jacob, of course, not riding Call Me Lord as I called it. Uh, Scott, I think he, unless you know. Oh, oh, whoa. Okay. So Bell's Hill has absolutely yeah. walked through that. <coughs> uh, the Hill wasn't much better on the, at the back on, on, on the first circuit last time around. So got a circuit to go. You would think now that Bristol would be able to open up. At what point do they start asking Lost in Translation to close Ross Briley? You've got. It's got to be coming down towards the end of the back straight, doesn't it? Because you don't want to. You don't want to be too far behind coming into. The home straight because, like, like I said, you can just keep jumping and and they don't come back to you. So he is starting to to get a little bit closer now as his clanders oboe. Um, so, like I said, I, I think Bells Hill maybe had ideas of his station for a second there, and uh, and this might set up for clanders oboe and lost in translation. <laughs> it's and remarkable that he managed to walk uh, through that fence and stand uh, up. Yeah. I think. Uh, how are they betting at the moment, Al? Uh, Two point eight bristles am I, Paul M. And just as I said, that clanders oboe has gone favourite. Two point seven six. What Lost about Lost in Translation now? Because he's just shaking the reins, Alan. 4.2. Yeah, OK. Funders, so maybe just a, a tiny bit worried. I know he did one or two sketchy jumps on the first circuit, but as Paul said, you don't want to be making too many kind of mistakes in this ground when you have a bit of ground to make up. But um, you know, lots to play for. And Clamazobo just favouring now, 2.64. So they're flip-flopping the two up front. and Lost oh, in I Translation. think Bristol's winning. You, you don't am, think Bristol's winning? I am winning. confident that Bristol's winning. I think Clamazobo's starting to jump big. Which he just did there. That takes him out. That takes it out of you. Um, 
I'm going to call Bristol the winner. I'm, flow that. I'm um, calling Bristol as the winner. Clander Zobra just had a little think about that fence, but he's, he's, he's on his it's, tail. It's, now Lost yeah, in Translation is making a move. And this is a perfect advert for the in-running market. 13 to 8 favourite, all the way out to over 3 to 1 in the run. OK, uh, Ross Briley, pick it up. I, I mean, I want to be Lost in Translation here. We've got Bristol Demise being softened up by Bells Hill. Clander Zobo, as Paul said, you know, he often needs that first run. His jumping is, has been OK. In theory, he's been in the right position throughout, but he's not taken advantage of it yet. So The big three are going clear then, guys and they're if, coming if, towards the outside on the back straight. If Lost in Translation gets anywhere near the heels of Bristol Demai down the uh, down the home straight, given the way this race has unfolded so far, I'd be, I'd be, I'd be hopeful of him picking him up. He's, 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 he's starting to jump a little bit, but he, he just knuckled a bit, there. a bit there, didn't he? OK, yeah. let's go to Alan Conway then before they get near the home turn. Is he odds on yet? 2.14 2 Bristol Demai <laughs> with... Clan as well with 3.35 and last translation 3.9. I tell you what, we're going to learn a great deal about this year's Clan de Zobo, guys, aren't yeah. we? Because I think it, he's, he's going I think rather he's well. I think Clan is cooked. I think Clan is cooked. Lost in translation now looks like the first of the big three mm. to clap then. Last year's winner, first time out. Does he need a run? At the moment, he's looking that way. Bristol coming then. We've got four fences in the home straight. Bounding along. He is bound low, but here comes Clanders Oboe. Harry Cobden looks like he's got lows underneath him. Can Lost in Translation do it? I'm assuming not. Wing goes Bristol Demai. Looks like it's a two-way play because Lost in Translation falling out the back of the telly. Ross Briley. Yeah, the worry here is how much was Bristol Demai uh, well, used I, up early on with Bells Hill? I, I, I was absolutely Oboe convinced a moment ago, and, uh, and now I'm sort of thinking, well, hang on a minute. He's running come wide for the better behind. ground as well, and Clans absolutely <laughs> wing, wing, pinging. He's Wrong still, shoulder, Daryl. He's still the wrong way. You're non... Just, oh, just, absolutely just shaking to, the reins at him oh, there. Remember Paul Keeley said it would be that. Bristol in the run. The big two remember going for Paul it then. Remember what Paul said earlier about travellers, though. What, what are we, two out now? He hasn't gone for Clan at all. He's holding him, holding Bristol him. Will Bristol nice oh, game? Oh, now he goes fight. for Clan de Zobo. The, the grey going, going clear. Going on again. I tell you what, Paul Keeley, you might just have called this right. This is going to be one hell of a market to look at after the final fence. Up he goes, the grey. The white Gandalf, indeed, is going absolutely clear. Clanders Oboe has just taken a blow from two out. Take a bow. Team Twist and Davis. Three-time winner of the Betfair chase. Paul Keeley came down on him in the end. Two from two all of a sudden. You can't keep a good man down. Clanders Oboe. Absolutely clear of the rest in second. Lost in translation is going to finish, but he won't be third. No, Keeper no, Hill's going to pick like him up Hill's for that by the looks of things. What a race. Daryl Jacob bunching the air. Love to see that. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go to Alan Conway before we get the panel's thoughts. Oh, what a, what a race there. What an absolute brilliant race. Bristol to my hit a high of eight in the run, so maybe a, a, a bit shorter than many people thought, but heartbreaking for Clanders Elbow backers. Hit a low 1.22 in the run. Of as Travelers Ross said, again. Yeah. This is Paul. Yeah. He said it literally a race before. Yeah. One point two two. Did you think that Clam was going to pick up the great grey? Although he definitely looks more like Desi now, doesn't he? This Good job I had nothing in my hand at the time when he looked over the wrong shoulder. Like, <laughs> what, uh, happened, what happened was Daryl well, Jacob got to, was coming to two out, and he th he must have thought he was clear. Must have gained so well. He looks <laughs> over the shoulder, and of course, coming up on his inside was Harry Cobden. Daryl gets shaken, but I tell you one thing: this horse does. Bristol the Adock he's been called over the years, hasn't he? His first win since 2018. Great to see him back. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, I mean, he's literally what was it? Four wins and four wins in a second at, at Haydock now. Yeah, and three wins in a second in this race as well. Yeah, yeah, he's just a fantastic horse. And you know, when the rain came, I thought you've got to come down on him because you know that's you know, Tom Nigel Twist and is absolutely adamant that he doesn't want the soft, but yeah. Nobody else wants the soft either. And the and way the course really has been has. riding over fences as well a little bit. And the front runners just get into that oh. rhythm. The others have to make oh. the ground up. It's going gonna, I, I, it's gonna to happen again in the, uh, the stayers chase later on. But, I mean, this could be... We could look at the end of this season and say every horse in this race has, has had their gold cup. Yeah. This is Bristol Demise. Clanders Oboe will go to Kempton. And loss in translation, you know, a big run last year could go on and win at Cheltenham. So it could end up that this race throws up you know, essentially two Grade One winners from here. Yeah, on I mean, the don't races. don't write off the ones behind. Those were those are Bristol's conditions, yeah. and he did what he does best around the course that he loves more than anything else. Yeah, so don't write off Lost in Translation. Where will they go next with Lost in Translation? Well, you can't see him go back to Kempton, can you? It, well, you can't see him going back to Kempton. No, it's, it, it's an interesting one because he probably doesn't want to ground that deep. Uh, and you know, if you actually get a good ground gold cup, you're still going to be a massive player. Yeah. Right, but we just, well, you know, well, last few years, we've been getting soft ground all the, the other time. The other thing to say about this race is, at the start of the week, it looked like it was going to be maybe a slightly drier meeting, didn't it? Paul, in, indeed, when I was speaking to you yesterday, oh, so I don't think yeah, it's going to be as soft as this. At, but. 
Yeah, this is the problem. You look at weather forecasts. I spend my life looking at the, the, you know myriad uh, uh, weather sites, and they all said, "Oh, yeah, it's going to be dry." It's the home. hardest thing about yeah, tipping, really, in advance. Isn't and it? then you know you can look twenty four hours later and it says something completely different, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. But the, the, the yeah. Haydock going stick has been covered in mud for about 15, 20 years, hasn't it? It's, ne it, it's never as dry as anyone. Well, I was having a look. Be. They called it. You know, it was it was like four point eight, and it's good to soft, soft in places, or soft, good to soft in places. And I'm yeah. like, hang on a minute, I'll go back and have a look. And they had one where it was like 4.5 and it was called soft, good to soft in places. And then the meeting, meeting before that was 4.8 and it was heavy. <laughs> but, you know, so, you know, I'm becoming, you know, I'm becoming a bit of a critic of the going stick now because I just don't, you know, either people aren't using it right or it just puts you away more often than not. Yeah, of course, I'm, I'm getting my jockeys totally wrong. Harry Cobden is down at, at Ascot, isn't it? Harry Cobden's down at Ascot, yeah. yeah. What's going on in yeah, my life? Yeah, with Sam Twister. Daryl Jacob is indeed up at Haydock. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. at, least, at least you've got the horses finishing the right horse. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters, isn't it? That's what we, can't, we can't control the men on top, of course. Well, look, the one, what a treat that was for you out there. And the staying cup, the Gold Cup division is now starting to firmly shape up again. We've got to get to Ascot, though, because we've got fiendishly difficult. 3.17, we jump off for a two-mile handicap as well. Uh, so, look. Get your messages in. We will read the feedback that you're giving us. What do you think? What do you do with Lost in Translation now? Is Clandis Obo going to topple surname again in the King George? And is Bristol Demire going to win anywhere else this season? Bar Haydock. Let us know. We will try and get them in towards the end of the show as well. Great to have you out there. We've got, what, roughly around about another 40 minutes of the show left. We'll see. End in the bump, but let's not hope it's not as dark as it was last Saturday. That was a little bit controversial as well. But let's get to uh, this race at Ascot. I want to go to Alan Conway first and foremost because there looks like there's been a gamble on the Kim Bailey runner. First flow. He is now joint favourite, David, at 4.6 with Magic Saint. About head to bet in there. Capeland, 6.6, .6, and my fancy in race, Abbey Magic at 6.6 .6 also with Amula Gold at 8, with just over 209,000 matched on the, the bet for exchange. But as I said, Abbey Magic will be the one for me. Reappeared in a good race at Cork five weeks ago. There's a couple of wins beside the name Henry de Bamhead bringing the horse over, and Brian Frost booked as well. So I'm going to have a, a 20 pound win bet at 6.6 .6 now on the, the bet for exchange, and hopefully. He can get the job done. And what, as you said, is a, is a fiercely competitive race with Magic Saint just nipping into favouritism now at 4.3. He's full of himself on the way down to the start, but it looks like he's just playing with his jockey there as well. It's interesting to see Henry de Bromwich come over with one. I must admit, he, he, he caught my attention. I'm slightly worried about a pace duel here, Paul Keeley. Uh, it's more than a jewel, isn't it? I mean, there's up to four. It could be. It could be. What's uh, more than a jewel? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Slapping match. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, there's about four that could be. It could be going at it, isn't there? It's a proper dust up up front. Like, on paper, you know, for, you know, first floor Abbey, um, uh, Gino Trail, uh, and who's the other one? Amula Gold Cam. Yes, um, absolutely. I think, I think actually, when when Maracuja won at Weatherby last year, he made the run, and he won. This is your selection. He won isn't today. It? Uh, yeah, it, it's my selection. I'm a little bit worried. He's a bit of a monkey, and not really. Well, a, he's definitely a monkey. Not really a horse <laughs> for a seven pound claimer. Um, yeah, William Marshall takes the ride. But, but he I, was, I said to you off air, but they don't. If you're in the Skelton Academy, shall we say, mm. he, he's probably. He, he, Probably a rider thought capable of going places, isn't he? Yeah, he's had plenty of rides for you. The strike rate isn't particularly high, um, but we'll have to see. I don't think I don't think he's got a, a, a big winner yet to his name. Um, but you know, this isn't a massive race. It's just he's a, third in know, this race two years ago. Keels, when it's oh, well, set he, up you know, well, for well, him. he was third in the uh, he was third in the Clarence House Chase uh, in, oh. in January, and he got absolutely thumped by the handicap before that. Uh, That's right. Most it was people, very topical horse that was. Most it? people thought at the time, well, hang on a minute, you know, the handicap was monster overreaction here, stuck him up £11. Pound. Uh, proved to be true, but he got all that £11 pound back in just three runs. And he probably deserved to be higher than his current mark after winning at Weatherby because he absolutely bolted up that day. So I think, you know, in terms of handicapping, I think he's got a, I think he's got a serious shot. Um, there are younger, more improving horses in the race, and Magic Saint did tear apart a good field at Cheltenham. Okay, all right. Uh, with you, uh, thank you, Kills, for that. Um, I've got a couple of, a, a bit of love for Capeland out there before I go to. I'm getting the socials through, by the way, on my computer. Matthew Jones, we know you're on Capeland out there. And Joe Holden as well. Good to have you back on the show. Joe, Capeland for me as well. Uh, I know, yeah, there's a lot of, I spoke to you about Capeland as well, didn't I, earlier? He's got Ascot form, hasn't he? Yeah, again, another one of those horses with Ascot form. In fact, you know, he, he should have won once more, didn't he? He got taken yeah. through, the, through the wing. But and then he came back. And might suit him. 
Yeah, he could, he could easily suit him. He didn't jump well at the last meeting, though. Right, OK, Ross Bradley, what wins? Uh, Caitlin for me as well. Um, ah. We've seen Magic Saint come on for the run. We've seen a lot of Nichols horses today need that run. Kind of over the, the latest one who's, you know, maybe, I say blown up on the run. It might be a bit harsh given the way Bristol Demai finds. But, uh, yeah, he didn't jump very well last time out. I think I want to see where he's going to be positioned because I think the problem was he was tucked behind runners last time out and he is, he's a bit of a thinker as well. I don't think he got a good view of the, uh, the fence and... Uh, and unseated the rider, but Harry Cobden's back on board. Tong tie, cheap pieces, and this track at this time of year. Um, yeah. I did make a note of this. Where is he uh, over in November? Uh, three from five in November should have been four from five because I think he would have beat Diego de Charmille when he got uh, he got uh, essentially went through the wing, but got intimidated by Diego de Charmille. It's so just a mark for me, guys. That I'm, it's, it's a one fifty <laughs> mark for him. I think is it, this, you know, he's gonna, uh, but he's, this is his. It's he's, worth it based on yeah. that run, based on that win. But will he find were. better treated horses? I, I, I mean, I found this a bit of a nightmare, as I said, it's fiendishly tricky. I came down on Drum Connor lad, Kevin Brogan, having the absolute winter of his life so far. Very talented, taking off seven. You, was thought to be a grade one potential for Ado Keatley. Uh, we're just watching. We're, we're speaking about seven pound claims, by the way. He's, I mean, he's been running out of his oh, he's skin. Absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, no, he's very good. Yeah, yeah uh, he's absolutely. Very good. He, 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 uh, the Brogan brothers are highly regarded. Is he now with John Joe? Is yeah. he with John Joe Kevin Brogan? Yeah, yeah he is. So, uh, Ado Keatley would have used him quite a few times as well. I just like the way that he mapped it, hosed up at air. This is, of course, a stiffer test. Yes, he's a 10-year-old, but I thought he would sit nicely in the run. So he'll do for me in a tricky race. What about Magic Saint, then? I, I actually got this guy right uh, on the Friday of Cheltenham. Brian Carver keeps the ride. What don't we like about Magic Saint? The rise in the weight? Well, there's nothing really to dislike about him. Like I said, he's, I, think he's, I think he's absolutely the rightful favourite. I'm surprised at the money for first flow, to be honest, because I don't think the ground's anywhere near soft enough for him, because I think he wants it really deep. Mm. Is this, there not a ground condition for Magic Saint is, a bit as well? Yeah, but yeah, you said, uh, yeah, but he, he doesn't want it too he deep. Doesn't does he? Want it, he doesn't want it too deep. Um, you know, the times have been pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it's good to soft side of soft rather than soft. Yeah, it's not. I mean, like you say, it's no, not it first is. flow not, heavy, is no, it? No, no, so. it's not first flow heavy. So it might be more in suit for Magic Saint. I think he's the most likely winner. I've had a couple of quid each way on, on Maracuja, and it's good to see um, the 13-year-old Gino Trail behaving like a two-year-old now. That yes, he's, he's not out at all, down, is he? But yeah. he's gone off. He has jumped off. I mean, okay, it, all right. It, We're it, off and running then. Who is going to take off this pace duel? Ross Briley. Yeah, well, I mean, last year the, the, there was three of them went absolutely hell for leather out in front, and it's um, it looks like it's going to be another good clip again. First <laughs> flow's made a mistake. <laughs> Yeah, Maracucha's gone through to the front now to take on with Abbey Magic and Gino Trail. We know what we're talking <laughs> about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I've backed him because he might pick up the pieces and there he is. Does that front. mean that Amula Gold is but the... But again, he did, as like I said, he did make the run when he won at Weatherby. OK. And, so and regarding the improved form, Stables said, the trainer's representative said he appreciated being racing racing near the front. So, well, uh, they've gone hell for leather. Oh. And, uh, uh, Abbey Magic wasn't great there at the second under Bryony Frost. Not the Bryony's day thus far. Of course, it could all change. But now, Gino Trail adopts his a usual front yeah, running role. Yeah. Right out the back is my boy Drum Connor Lad. He's, he's, at the age of 10, that wouldn't be ideal for him, I don't think. First flow hugging the inside, Magic Saint going all right. Amula Gold right out the back. Ooh, it's just going to set up for that one. And Capeland going well at the moment. Let's go to Adam Conway. What's the market saying? We've got our positions in the run. Magic Saint, current five at 4.3, with Capeland the five. Abby Magic made that mistake at 6.2. And if you fancy Gino Trail to stay where he is, you can back him at 21. On the Betfair Exchange with 584,000 matched as they swing down the back straight. Thank you very much, Alan Conway. Jamie Moore then, just going to try and get the anchor on old Gino Trail, isn't it? Um, the 13 year old now with Fergal Brian, O'Brien, of course, Kerry Lee had him for a long time. He loves the soft ground. Would it be soft enough? Abby Magic trying Tremendous to make a move. jumper at his best. Oh, absolutely fantastic. And again, the front runners, we've been seeing them, but is he going that little bit too quick? I expect them to concertine at the moment. I like the way Magic Saint's going. Yeah, Magic Saint's been in the perfect position. and He's been in the uh, in the in the gap behind the front runners. I like the fact that Capelin switched out wide. Like I said, I don't want to see him covered up. He raced wide in this race last year, and then the pace collapsed, and he zipped through and won really nicely. And as he jumped the, the last, he, he powered clear. Um, Amula Gold, though, obviously, has to take the form to uh, to another level. But I wonder whether Maracuja hassling the front runners is going to set it up for. Th- oh, I mean, that's a bad jump from Maracuja. Yeah. And, he yeah. did well to sit there, boys, didn't he? Yeah, yeah didn't William Marshall yeah. Um, did a did a proper little uh, rodeo just, job on that. He just took off too early, didn't he? Yeah. Like that. Drunk on a lad uh, is 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 a long way back and has a hell He's of a gone. lot of jumping uh, yeah. running to do from there. Magic Saint Capelin is in the perfect position here. First flow is out of his. Uh, 
Adam is run. He's normally up there from the uh, on the speed as well. So I think the fact that Gino Trail's gone on like this has really taken a few of these out yeah, of their, their comfort zone. The, the Nichols horses are uh, happy where they are. Mm. Yeah, I mean the way Capelin finished this race last year, that's that's a perfect position for me for Harry Copter. Okay, we're picking up on the far side. We've got what around about five or six, six or five left to go, I should say. So Amula Gold, hoping that they collapse out the back. Then uh, next up, we've got First Flow stalking, sitting confidently ridden First Flow. Maracuja looks like he's going backwards now after that. Uh, and then we of course we've got Magic Saint stalking with Capelin just sitting off the leader is Abby Magic and just Gino Trial hanging on to that lead. Who wins it? Paul Keeley. Uh, first flow is actually going is the one that catches the eye as the traveller. But I think uh, I think Caitlin is also going well on the outside, and if his jumping holes together, he does finish strongly here. Magic Saint just getting a shake of the reins now. Is this coming a bit too quickly after that quick turnaround under it's the penalty? Three-way play, Ross Briley. Yeah, if it, that's a poor jump by Caitlin. This is his track. Amula Boy. Gold is probably the, going to be the finisher, but I mean, he fancies uh, yeah. his luck on Caitlin. I think doesn't he? Big time, I, Harry Cobden. I mean, the way that, I mean, Abby Magic found plenty for pressure last last time out, so it's not completely out of it. But Caitlin, the way it finished last time out, well, Amula Gold are probably running into the home straight. We go, yeah, Magic Saint Caitlin, coming back surely. onto the bridle. Abbey Magic giving it a good sight. Capelin absolutely swinging. They'll be keen not to go on too soon with him. First gold, not first flow, not totally out of it. Amula Gold trying to get him, but oh, go Magic on, Saint go got on. that all wrong. Capelin, as you can hear there, Ross Briley getting a little <laughs> bit happy in the run. First flow, the gamble of the race is filling as long as he's coming. Amula Gold not totally done with. Harry Cobden goes for Capelin. What will he find? First he's flow. having to think about it. First flow absolutely oh, wins it. it. Amula Gold on the outside. Could this be a near last to first? First flow, gamble landed, I think, lads. Kim Bailey, what a day for him and David Bass. Amula Gold trying desperately to get there, but the line won't come in time. Yes, first flow, Gamble landed, first time out. Great trainer, that Kim Bailey, isn't he? Good job you knew where the line was. Wasn't <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I wasn't, I, I wasn't that sure. I nearly did a long <laughs> shot there, where of course you never know where the line is. But no, it, it, it's, it's so hard to make up ground at Ascot, I think, after the last. First flow, another favourite goes in. That was Sam Gamble, Alan Conway. It was indeed, wasn't it? Hit a high of 22 in the run, so a few punters there maybe just thought he sat it too far out of his depth, but a great jump at the last, wasn't it, to, to see a victory and a Moolah goal rattling home, who hit a low of 2.08, so I'd say a few fingers burnt there on the on the Betfair exchanges. Yeah, Moolah good to see a joggy home. thinking for himself as well, because obviously there was loads of pace in the race and he was one of the angles and he just decided to sit off it. Do you remember against Angel's Breath last year in that novice chase? Was, would it have been on this card last year? It was, wasn't it? He went too, he went too hard, didn't mm, he? Or being mm. Angel's Breath, is, you know, classier horse perhaps at the weights that day. But they had that in mind, didn't they? D David Bass showing maybe another side to his, his armoury mm, there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, he's given that a fine, fine word. Yeah, what do you do with horses anyway. like this then, Ross? That one off one four eight now. He's going to go into the one fifties. At what point do they try their luck back in graded company with this chap? <laughs> what was it? What was that off again? What? Yeah, one four eight. So he's probably going to go have up much what, choice seven two mile chases. You know, you've done there aren't that many two mile handicaps. There aren't that many good two mile handicaps. There's one in Ireland, and there's the Grand Annual, I think, between now and yeah. uh, the end of the season. Is that why he ran up. Magic Saint then? Because when that one at, at at Cheltenham, you're thinking, right, try your luck in Grady Company, could come back for the Grand Annual. But here he mm. is turning out there. Didn't yeah. it look necessarily the right race for him, did it? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's a case of having to. He's run well, actually, man, yeah, Magic he, Saint, yeah, hasn't he? Yeah. he has whacked he has the second well. last. He whacked the, sec he, he whacked the second last, and he might, have, you know, by the looks of it, they, they did, you know. Chased too strong a pace early doors. Mm. Uh, baffled as to why I'm my outsider took the running up, but but there you go. You never know, never do know, do you? That was well. Uh, what? Okay, let's address that because I at the very beginning when I saw a Moolah Gold, a horse that I thought we thought might be oh. the one of the skeletons that went on. I thought, are oh. they trying to set this up a little bit? How do we think about that? Yeah, well, that, 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 that could be. Well, they you know they obviously knew it was going to be it was going to be a strong run race, so yeah. why not why not hold them up? Mm, uh, Lula Gold, but I mean, I mean America Jack, he, he did make the running once, but he doesn't normally. No, I think uh, I think we can say the tactics were wrong on that. In that, but they, you know, but there was no need to sling another one up there because My Gino point being, was did they make try the and set it up for? Well, that's Gold. what I said. There was no need to. Yeah, because the pace was already in there. Because the pace was already <laughs> in there, and you know, uh, America just has got his own owners. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? It's yeah, not a, it's yeah, not a yeah, case yeah. of... He has got his own, but I, knowing connections, that mm. it might well be that you know there is a target for mm. almost like Maracuja. Is mm. he, he, Perhaps he on a smaller around. track, uh, we're getting he, down he, a handicap a bit more. Yeah, possibly. But again, I mean, he, he, he does tend to uh, show his best, or at least he's the most eye-catching when he comes off the back mm. of a strong yeah. pace. But mm. I mean, I, I, I agree. I think it's a fantastic ride by David Bass, first things first, because um, like you said, he, he, he rode a very different race to win on Imperial or earlier on. And... Uh, he's he's used his brain there. He's seen them to go off too fast, and 
He's, he's timed that to absolute perfection. It was a lovely slow motion as they, uh, as they came into the last. The, the, the jump was exemplary. And Amula Gold beat Ableo last time out because that one went too soon. David Bass timed the, uh, the winning run there to perfection. And Capeland, a final word on that. Do you think he, how he got there a bit sooner than he wanted? I think so, yeah. He, he, I thought he just had a little look at that. We've obviously seen what he's done there in the past, haven't we? Yeah. Run into a better handicapped horse at the end of the day, though, was he? Yeah, he uh, has indeed. I think because you know, he's quite a decent horse. He's, he's young, progressive. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if that might go Tingle try Creek? and up him in trip. That would be quite interesting. Did he get anything in the Tingle? I don't suppose he did, did he? Oh, good question. Tingle Creek uh, coming up here, of course, in a couple of weeks' time uh, on RP he, Live. Maybe the... Um, Desert Orchid for first flow, maybe if he was going to go up. Yeah, it could be the Desert Orchid. Kempton. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is that on Boxing Day or the day after? Yeah, day um, after. Guess actually. what? We're going to be covering that as well. Can we tempt you in over the festive period, Ross Bradley? It depends if there's any. Are the, are the, tr the trains run these days? <laughs> You're the man that usually He'll brings be walking in on Boxing Day, yeah. Really, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> you leave well, on, on the M1 on my own. <laughs> we will be with you. We will be uh, with you still today for two races. He is in the Tingle Creek. He is in the Tingle he Creek. Okay. We'll see what Kim Bailey says about that. Uh, or maybe I'll get the owner to make a comment. I, I'm not sure after, after some of Kim's comments this week have been very lively and fun. Kim uh, is having a great season, of course. A big double today. Imperial Aura, if you weren't with us earlier on, he is he the horse to take out today away from the, you know, obviously the Betfair chase with the one. He's the one that's got me excited though, Kills. Yeah, well, he's the horse that's going forward. He's the young horse that, you know, it looks like he may still have his best days ahead of him. Uh, yeah, just a, just sit in the Ryanair. One or two in front of you going off. Oh, yeah, kind of where does he go from now? What does he run in next? Oh, good shout. Would you go some... Uh, Peterborough comes a bit too soon, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, let's think. Would you go back to Ascot for the... Uh, for, there's a... Ah, yes. We run, well, you go... For the one that caught him. Mind you, uh, one of them's too close to Cheltenham, isn't yes, it? Yes, it that's is. That's, that's the Ascot chase is too think. close to Cheltenham. Cost Corto style. Yeah. Uh, and uh, he has, he's already said that he, he's not sure he's a horse he wants to run too quickly so that's so, true uh, well, you know more about him than any of us yeah, so, so would you go back on trials day is there a race from there potentially uh, no he's not going to run in no. the Cotswold world chase is he no intermediates for uh, him is there no i mean there's a two and a half mile handicap but we can be oh, running that of 163 not a or whatever. Oh, i can't see that so. well let's hope that kim bailey gives us a, lot find of, something. a, a, a bit of love in his we're probably uh, missing something very obvious Yes, <laughs> let, yeah, sure let us know if we are. Let us know if we are. We have got it's, it's still got a bit to. of time now, actually, in between races. <laughs> if you wanted to get your socials in, do so. We can give you a big old mention There'll out be there. Plenty of time while the next race is on as well. Mm. Well, so. well, we have because yeah. it's a three-mile four novice chase. Can you believe that we're bringing the card down? A novice at chase, not a novice chase, mate. Don't, don't I said it's a marathon it. chase. You said it was a novice chase. I did not I say it's a novice. Did I? I don't know. I might have said novice chase as well. It's a novice marathon. I'm a novice. Let's go to Alan Conway. He can tell us what sort of race it is. Oh, what a, what, what a race to close. This is going to be a, a, a proper, proper slog. It's a three mile, four furlongs in that ground. King's Monarch is current, our current fab of 4.2. Don Poli, who would have thought a few years ago that Don Poli would be, would be pitching up here, uh, having run in Gold Cups. Second fab of 5.7 with Pobbles Bay at night to do. Um, I have to admit, I, I found this a, a very, very tricky race. So I'm much ha happier to step aside for Ross if he has a, a strong fancy, but. Um, at the sentimental side of me, I backed on Poli into the in the Gold Cup. David Russell waited a, a couple of days. Am I allowed like, to laugh challenge. at you now? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, oh Lord, Paul Keeley. Poor, poor David Russell waited a couple of days before making the challenge that race. But um, yeah, no, for, for sentimental reasons, I'd like to see Don, Don Poli going well, but not not a strong fancy for me in in the closing contest. Oh, okay, so uh, Alan Alan Conway doing the. Right thing, and just sitting it out and watching. Uh, perhaps you might indeed be tempted to get into something in the run here. Uh, Paul Keeley, come to you here, because having laughed at Alan Conway, there, <laughs> and I'll, uh, just before you go on about this, a friend of mine who reads you religiously, Paul yeah. Keeley, said, have I seen that your mate Kills has gone for Don Poli, we call Don Slowly, I think he might have started that nickname, and lo and behold, here you are, the fickle character you are, putting him out. Yeah, I did call him Don Slowly. I, I, you know, he was never fast enough to win a Gold Cup in my eyes, and I got loads of stick for, for telling people that, uh, including <laughs> including once when I was sat, sat at some posh do at a Cheltenham uh, preview evening, uh, uh, saying this guy's got no chance or whatever, and it turns out that two seats away from Mrs. Breeder. <laughs> you know, he right? wasn't best pleased. We did have a good laugh about it the following year. That's all that matters. Uh, but yeah, um, Look, he's, he's, he's a horse that stays forever. He's just never been that fast. I mean, he was, he was a great one horse in his own way. But he's now down to a mark of 130. <sighs> and 
Uh, you know, what's interesting is he ran his best race for four years, first time out for, for Dan Skelton last time. He really yeah. attacked those fences at Aintree. I'd say that was and sharp enough for him. Two pound mind. Uh, yeah, he got, yeah, well, he got beat a fair way in the end, didn't he? You, you, you have to, he got beat 17 lengths, I think, in the end. So, so uh, But now he's got the extra half mile. He's got a right slog, which is what he wants. I mean, you know, they take so long here. You know, President Trump might have resigned or conceded by the, <laughs> by the time it's over. Wouldn't count. Uh, you know. He'll still uh, be here for next year, isn't he? Or whatever, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think, you know, Dan Skelton said uh, in his stable tour in the Racing Post, he said, I think the fire's still burning in him and uh, he's very hard also to get fit, so he should be fitter too. Darren Yates, of course, picked him up, Ross, didn't he? It was a r- remarkable investment that Darren Yates made. He had a little bit of bad luck along the way, didn't he? It looks like Dan Skelton might be the man for him. They've got a promising novice that went at Weatherby, whose name escapes me. He looks like he's going places. 1-1-1 one, one, one on heavy ground, Don Poley. Yeah, he'll, he'll relish conditions. Um, I, I guess my worry for him a little bit is how he's going to be ridden, because obviously when he was... Uh, in his pomp, you know, he would um, be a little bit off the pace, go off the bridle after 20 seconds, and then just yeah. just keep grinding. But I think you have to go back. I think it was 2000 and when was it? 2000, at least seven or eight years since we had a horse who didn't race in the first or second. First in this reference of the notebook. Little yeah. notebook the trusty black yeah. book. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was for some other use, but None of it makes any sense. It's it's, uh, it's all just scribbles, not even real words. Um, but yeah, you want to be on the pace in this race. But you're not encouraged by the way he was ridden at Aintree then, because he actually went for home a long way out there. Yeah, I mean, and this is the thing. Was up there. If again, if you were, if you, if you know, it is. We are talking about Betfair after all. So I think if you're going to back Don Polly, you want to see as they line up where he's going to be. Because if he's in the first one, two, or three, as they set off, I think he, uh, you know, he does have that stamina in that heavy ground four. I think two horses who are guaranteed to be on the speed are Financial Outcome and Midnight Tune. Um, Midnight Tune's a bit in and out, but you know, he's a front-running, soft ground lover. Um, who uh, who will potentially jump them into submission from the uh, the front? A bit all or nothing. Either wins or pulls up. That's your, your two options with Midnight Tune, and the other one's Financial Outcome. I think you can put a complete line through last time out. Made a shuddering error uh, quite early on in that race, and that put paid to its chances. Um, but Rebecca Curtis again suddenly coming to a bit of form. She had a mm. winner the other day. The, 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 she hasn't had that many runners, but they are coming into it. Daryl Jacob, we've just seen rise this track really well. And he, he's um, never ridden for Rebecca Curtis, as far as I can see. So this could be a first. That's first run interesting, first isn't it? I mean, you say it rides it well. He's, he's just shown on on Bristol to my exactly how well he rides it. Exactly. And again, yeah. this is another horse who likes to be up there with the speed. It disputed uh, sort of second behind King's Monarch uh, on its penultimate start, and um, you know, obviously that one's been very well backed. And it's a progressive seven-year-old for a for a yard who do well with this kind of type, and have already had a winner with the machine earlier on. So King's Monarch's clearly the one to beat on. On that form, but I do think financial outcome has got a chance of turning that form around. Right, with the old boy, perfect form. candidate, made all last year. Mm. He's well, he'll be up there as well. Be up there, isn't he? He's a he's a lovely old horse, perfect candidate. Just the sort yeah. of rider that just the, the Paddy game, Brennan gets. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He, he basically is the equine equivalent of Paddy Brennan. Just never gives up. Just when you think you you know you can't go and do it. And I, I remember at Cheltenham a couple a of seasons time, ago, he won. At, was it the at uh, the November meeting? He won the big yeah. handicap off a ridiculous yeah. weight. Yeah. Yeah, he's, 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 he's a very, very tough horse. I like Hobbles Bay. Now, mind, yeah. oh, Hobbles yeah. Bay for me, I thought it was probably warming up for something at Aintree last time, uh, when of course he was ahead of the aforementioned Don Poli, and I think he'll just absolutely love this. Uh, uh, we've got a social coming up on the screen, let's get there quickly, let's get it up, what have we got? Uh, Andy Sim, good to have you back on Andy. King's Monarch will relish these conditions, yeah. Gamble of the race of course, Alan Conway, just want to go on. Kerry Lee's runner. He is indeed, he's going to go off further. 4.0 currently on the Betfair Exchange with Don Poli, 5.6, Hobbles Bay at 8.8, and a little bit of money for a perfect candidate now into 10 on the Betfair Exchange with a minute or so just before post time, and as £379,000 is matched on the Betfair Exchange. But yeah, King's Monarch going to go off favour currently 3.9. Thank you, Alan Conway. My worry about Pobbles Bay, I think, actually, is that he might get a little bit too far back, but we shall see. I mean, the way he's lining up, well, to be fair, the way he's lining up, every horse is going to be front running <laughs> by the way they are. Yeah, no, well, They've got, they got a minute to go, yeah, a couple of turns. Yeah, have a market yeah, on who's going to lead. <laughs> Perhaps Maracuja will. Uh, OK, so we've got two more races for you here on RP Live. We'll have a bit of a break after this for the last at Ascot as well. The Bumpo, do you like in that? And Richard Spence also has been gambled in that in the famous colours as well. Keep your socials coming in. We'll give you a shout out. We've had a great show today so far. What's the highlight being? I said Imperial Aura. Kills, you'd agree with that? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think First Flow is 
going forward as well. I what about Song for nice Someone? Performance. That was your big shout. Song for, so, song for Someone just looked really nice, and he's, it's, he, he's just a bang two and a half miler, though, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Aintree it, Hurdles. Just, it, it, uh, yeah, it, 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 it's Aintree Hurdles. Not the best track for front runners over hurdles, I don't think that's Um So you'd probably, you know. It's a tricky one, isn't it? Where do you go with these intermediate well, hurdles? You know, right? it's, 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 National yeah. Spirit's a good you know, shout. National yeah. Spirit front well, um, the real kill hurdle, you know, it's something like that. Um, but where you go for a championship event, it's, it's, it's not 100% certain. Mm, okay, Tom Sims again, he might be giving us a steer. Check in your members' sections. You can get all your post-race quotes there, first and foremost. Our reporters are out there giving you all the action. Just look at the corner of my eye. They're lining up. Ross Briley, I'm going to hand over to you for a lovely call of the last. It's a three-mile four race. You can go for a walk around the block if you like. Uh, I, was, I, could, I could do a <laughs> Bruce Millington and put the kettle on, couldn't I? Absolutely. So. You can put yeah. the kettle on twice. Um, yep, lining up then for the, uh, the staying handicap chase here. Three miles, four and a half furlongs. <laughs> We could <laughs> take a deep have breath. A talk about all sorts. In fact, get your socials in during this race. Yeah, they're off and racing then. And uh, like I said, we, we, we said you wanted to be on the speed, and someone's been listening because they're all going off here on the speed. Don Poli uh, over on the far side. Uh, we've got Midnight Tune as well as they jump the first. Everyone is over it pretty soundly. The worst uh, jump there was She Needed the Run. Uh, we'll see if that's true off a 252 day absence. Midnight Tune in front then being taken on by 45 Bay. Don Poli not too far away and Sutton Manor as well. Midnight Tune jumps it in front down this near side. Not a great jump from financial outcome. Uh, Daryl Jacob finding himself a little bit further back than he uh, there was in the last race. The Gamble Kings Monarch uh, currently pretty much last here with, uh, with Pobbles Bay. But like I said, we wanted to be on the speed, but it is... Very much a disputed uh, speed here, but we've seen that in races like this in the past. We saw it in the, the Betfair chase a little bit, and it didn't stop them. No, absolutely not. But they are, look, Paul Key, to my eye, going, f not going as slowly as I thought they would, let's put it that way. <sighs> it's hard, just you know, it's around, hard to tell. I mean, you know, they've got a long way to go. They've got two full circuits now, haven't they? So, um, you know, you wouldn't want to be going really, really hard. You'd expect everything to be reasonably close at this stage, see where they are in another circuit. Uh, a couple of them will have dropped out by then, probably. Okay, well, we, 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 we will know indeed. How far do you want to be back here? I'm not so sure. Pobbles Bay has expected. Ballydyne, I saw, whacked one, Ross yeah. Briley. Yeah, not a good jump by Ballydyne. Pobbles Bay, you said your worry was how far back he would be, Dave, and currently he's, um, he's only got one horse behind him, and that is she needed the run. Uh, let's rattle through the field then. Midnight tune, guaranteed uh, front runner. First time off a wind up, and like I said, is uh, either a winner or a placer. So we'll see if that one keeps going or drops out. Is in front, 45 Bay. Then on the inside, perfect candidate is on the uh, the speed as well. Don Poli, uh, a little bit wider out uh, to Sutton Manor. Widest of all is Financial Outcome. Behind that is Al Minar. Uh, she needed the run going wide. Out the back is Pobbles Bay with the gambled on favourite Kings Monarch. Uh, the aforementioned uh, one who made a mistake earlier on was Bally Dine. And I'm pretty sure that's all of the uh, the market mentioned. Well, so that's the one that's going worst of all is Don Poli. Yeah, he's, he's um, actually been scrubbed. Isn't along this what we get expect from yeah. him, though? He gets Isn't scrubbed. He gets, he's scrubbed along the coming out of the, uh, out yeah, of the paddock. I mean, isn't off, a mark, <laughs> off a mark of 130 <laughs> and a three and a half mile handicap chase. But it's what these, it's, it's his run style, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, he's I, just, I wouldn't rule yeah. him out at all. Alan Conway, what's Don Poli done in the market? He is currently 18.5 under the Defer Shades with. King's Monarch at three point seven. Yeah, he's on the move, yeah, no. King's Monarch, by the looks of it. I think he's on the move because he didn't jump that particularly well, and I think some Twist and Davis just thought I can't let these get away. But Midnight Tune's gotten into a lovely rhythm, as I said. Um, this is a, a guarantee front runner who, who stays the trip. Almanar just being uh, uh, niggled uh, by uh, by David Noonan to get a little bit closer as well. Pobbles Bay uh, covered in mud out the uh, the back as Midnight Tune jumps on. Oh, terrible error by uh, by Almanar and also Pobbles Bay and Almanar uh, cannoned into she needed the run. So those three. Uh, are currently struggling. Don Poli uh, off the bridle uh, as he uh, as he tends to be. Financial outcome down the outside. Perfect candidate. A little bit further back than he was in this race last year. Forty five bays not in a bad uh, bad position. But like I said, if this race goes to uh, goes to form from the last few years, um, uh, the uh, the front runner Midnight Tune, Sutton Manor, and Forty Five Bay are in the best positions. Yeah, when she stands up or when she finishes, she tends to win, doesn't she? One one p one p wind operation for Anti Honeyball. Mm. Having a really good time of it so far. Interesting horse here, kills in the run. I, I, I must admit, it sort of escaped my memory or, or, or attention recently that Sutton Manor is now with Lucinda Russell. 
Lucinda Russa, Lucinda Russa, yeah, I, I, I actually, Queen of the Stairs. Yeah, I actually, I actually thought, hang on a minute, are, are you right? It's our manner in this race. You're very <laughs> talented. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're getting an insight What's into going, the mind. What's going the on The tipping here? genius no, of Paul you know. Keeley. Uh, yeah, I thought that must that must be wrong. That must be a different name, but yeah, it's, uh, he was a very talented. Uh, Pobbles Bay is unseated. Is right around the back. Pobbles Bay. Pobbles Bay. Sean Bowen hits the deck. Uh, it was a, a fairly uh, fairly tame unseat. Though, so I think he looks a bit okay. frustrated with himself a bit. There goes my selection then. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, Harry Skelton's used up nearly all of his strikes on Don Poli with a circuit to go. Oh so, really? Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, yeah, That's it, not going well. I've embarrassed myself by tipping Don Poli. What am I doing? <laughs> well, look, he's actually... It, it, this could be a slow watch for you, this final circuit, because he's not done with Harry Skelton. He's going to be absolutely uh, shattered absolutely. after this. But these boys, unbelievable fitness-wise. So, with a circuit to go, Ross Briley, midnight tune, still on a lovely rhythm up front. Yeah, absolutely. Again, uh, and the uh, the front runners or the ones on the speed are shortening up in the, the market as well. And surprisingly, as we've got a circuit to go with midnight tune, no change really in the uh, in the lineup. with Sutton Manor in behind. Monarch as well. 45 Bay, Kings Monarch, yeah, yes. again, race not being run I to mean, suit him so you far. Know, you would, you know, be quite happy if you were on the one in front, wouldn't you? Yeah, I, they just, they just do not come back uh, anywhere, over, uh, over fences in background at Haydock, so midnight tune. The, uh, paddock there, didn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah it's, uh, again, yeah. you see that at Haydock, don't you? One that's catching my eye out the back, she needed the run. Sam Allwood, Charlie Todd, got a real rattle last year before signing off with a fourth. At the moment, not looking like she does need the run. I mean, I bet th these, th I mean, it wouldn't surprise me if the first three now were the first three coming yeah. onto the line. Yeah. This, this, this yeah. happens so often, they're down the back straight, midnight tune, till, still swinging along. Yeah, she's really enjoying herself in front, isn't she? Yeah, she's jumping for uh, for fun she, she usually wins in small fields but so far she you know it's you, like a small field isn't it when you're on your own exactly she wouldn't know it's not a small field at the moment because nothing else has she has to get had to that heels. wind operation let's see what that counts for some manner the final though five or six uh, fences i think we're about six out now. don slowly has failed to finish has he's he pulled oh, up so oh Manor is down. Oh. Oh. Manor's taken a crashing fall Christ. up on his feet yeah, get up boy, that's front lovely on its own to again. see Paddy okay. Brennan looks under his uh, under his legs to see that um, there's not too many going so it's midnight tune perfect candidate that uh and Sutton Manor quickly it? back up on his feet. Thank Midnight Tune jumps Lord. that beautifully. Financial right? outcome, whack that Ooh. one. That looks like the end of him. Okay. This uh, is going to go odds on in a second, sure. Alan Conway, we've got around about five to jump now. What is the market saying? 2.36 Midnight Tune and then 3.05 Perfect Candidate, which she needs to run 5.0 on the Betfair Exchange as they just come out of that straight. But yeah, Midnight Tune is jump, jumping very well and just hope. They can last home, but yeah. Yeah, they flip flop Midnight. down. Midnight, perfect candidate has gone short. Yeah, Midnight Tune, another fantastic jump, though. Perfect candidate could be a repeat winner. We've just seen one repeat winner at, uh, in the last race, but uh, perfect candidate loves it round here. The rest of uh, the other three are off the prize. We've got five uh, left going. Perfect candidate is in behind Midnight Tune on the inside 45 base. She needed the run, still running an absolute blinder. And Almanar probably going to be the last to finish if it does finish at all. I but think Midnight I'd Tune want to be on the one this. up front here, Roscoe. This was your shout, wasn't it, Midnight? Yeah, like I said, wins or pulls up. And I mean, You'd be surprised if it pulls up from here, wouldn't you? So um, she's going to go off from uh, into the home straight. Now he's Candidate. spoken. Lay off. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Midnight Tune now being challenged by Perfect Candidate, who definitely stays every yeah, inch. He looks like a two horse race, this, and unless she needs to run. He's picked her off. Yes, yeah, he Midnight has. Tune. Paddy Brennan going for it. He really fancies his chances. Four out. Here we go. One, two, three. Up he goes. Lovely Midnight jump. Tune going backwards now. Oh. Don't discount that. Don't discount the pulling off. Don't discount the pee. Discount <laughs> the pee. <laughs> Perfect, Perfect candidate. candidate gone clear. He stays absolutely all day. The 13 year old. Great to see these teenagers still loving life. Here he comes. Then Look at him. Three, quick. three and a half miles in the mud. And there he is. Look. Oh, absolutely fantastic. relishing it. And yeah, uh, yeah Paddy uh, must be absolutely thrilled to bits with this. So, oh, oh 45, 45 Bay. Bay. Finally, the errors are mounted up. She needed the run. It looks like it might just get second. I think it's running an absolute cracker. That can go down in grey. But this is all about perfect candidate. Fergal O'Brien having an absolute season to remember once again. Paul Keeley, you said he was about to go over his seasonal tally about a week or yeah, two. Yeah, I think he's got, to, he's got to have been there by and now. And she's pulled up. She has, she has pulled up. up. And the second there could last. be an R, though. It could be a refuse as well. I'll tell you yeah, what, this show, isn't it remarkable? <laughs> you say something can't happen, lo and behold, seconds later, egg on face. Perfect um, candidate has won by half the track yeah, here at Haydock. This has been a oh. gruelling test, hasn't it? Absolutely attritional. Uh, the battle of stamina. Four to five bay, and she needed Oof. to run walking over the last, but Paddy Brennan standing up, he can have a breather. Well done if you went back in with the old boy. Absolutely lovely horse. How many career wins is that now for him? Let's have a look down. Marker 134 who's chucked in on his old form. That is at now ninth from 44th run. We're still waiting for the second. Yeah, is there going to be a second? Yes, it is. <laughs> it's 45, hey, 45 bay. bay. Three get <laughs> over. Wow, amazing oh, things. Mad. 
sticky old race to watch that, Paul Keegan. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a hard watch sometimes, isn't it? They're, they're always struggling. We always knew that was going to be just like that. Uh, but but the old boy there, he said, there with his ears pricked, and he said, you know, what's wrong with you lot? Like, you know, I mean, this is fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, so... <laughs> 14 yeah, in, 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 in a couple of months' and time. I make that, unless... I don't know whether Fred LeBron's any other winners today, but I make that 55 for the season. His PB is 63. It's going to be well past that by Christmas, isn't it? Uh, abs- uh, yeah. With half the yeah. season still to go. So yeah, a lot fantastic. of nice young horses in, uh, fantastic in the ranks effort. as well, isn't he? Uh, okay, so Paddy Brennan, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Paddy's as well. There was a bit of money for that as well. Uh, Alan Conway, wasn't there? There wasn't there. The BS, starting BSP price of 8.92. Um, he hit a high of 13.20 in the run, so um, a few a few people would have got a few t- tasty prices there. But um, I said an attritional race, and hopefully all horse and jockeys come back safe, safe and sound after that race. But, um, yeah, no, good one for, for Paddy Brennan and... Regular Brown's good season continues. Yeah, it looks as though they were all right, didn't they? I think, I think all the fallers that I saw pretty much got up. And uh, yeah, absolutely. It's just one of those. Fitness tested. We've got to get to the final race then this Saturday here on Racing Post Live. Uh, it is a bumper. We're finishing off. There's a theme here, guys, isn't it? Thankfully, a little bit lighter than this time last week, Ross Briley at Cheltenham. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we were able to, uh, be able to see this uh, this finish. It was uh, desperate, as uh, Malcolm Thomas would say, uh, at Cheltenham <laughs> last week. But I mean, if I'm honest, though, it might be easier to call the, the winner as they cross the line, but I think it's significantly harder to call the winner pre-race, that's for sure. So, <laughs> Well, indeed. How many winners do you want? They wanted two last week, yeah. didn't they? But uh, Raysford, Paul Keeley, uh, has been holding his position in the market with Nicky Henderson. Although, I don't know, where do you stand with these Hendo horses when they're three to one or above? Uh, I don't know. It, look, it, it, it's, ve- it's very hard, isn't it? Sometimes they get smashed off the boards and they're, and they're not so good. Uh, and other times they win on the bridle, don't they? You don't know. I mean, I mean you know, what's the name of the, the Flinter Sackler got beat first time, didn't it? Yes. And, uh, and looks like a real tool behind a Ben Paul. Uh, you know, so you don't know. You don't know how ready they are. They not. They don't have the gun put to their head, do they? Uh, you know, the, man, the the horse for money is Wonderwall. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Royal Ascot winning trainer Richard Spencer having a having a bumper run a by Yates. Yeah. Uh, price um, went up from eighteen thousand euros as a foal to one hundred and five thousand as a three year old. So. He's obviously developed quite well. The money's down. Uh, they're, you know, they're, they're a good group of sporting owners. Let's get up to the market then, Alan Conway, and see exactly if this gamble on Wonderwall is indeed continuing. Yeah, it comes to second five now, 4.7. Uh, Can Do Kid currently at 4.4 as the, as the market leader. Uh, raised for a bit of a drifter out to 5.2 with Nicky Henderson's under a hammer from Fantastic at. 9.8 as as Ross alluded to it it's a tricky race isn't it to um to, to size up so um one that I'll just, I'll just be watching I think going through all the horses I think only two horses have pieces of form so definitely um one to watch and one to follow maybe follow the money with can do kid a 4.1 looks like going off fab Alan the, Conway the showing his professionalism there sitting out the last two races when you're not too sure when you you know when in doubt stay out as they say mm. don't force it uh, Ross Briley are you forcing it uh, when I'm going to tell you what, I'm, what I've tipped you might you might think I am um, but the, <laughs> there's, a, there's a trainer here who's in fantastic form here we go with a very profitable strike rate in bumpers um, and it's Chris Gordon I thought you were going to say Phil York then for <laughs> it's Phil York absolutely <laughs> Um, Storm Dennis. Storm Dennis, and who is that? He's yeah. got two. Um, same owners, one winning by Jamie Moore, one winning by Joshua Moore. I thought Storm Dennis was possibly the most interesting. Um, we've, we saw a, a, a soft ground winner uh, sired by a libertarian from the Henry de Bromhead stable over in Ireland the other day. Uh, and again, a, a, a Scirocco's a side with the other one again. Both perfectly reasonable strike rates in soft ground over, uh, over jumps. And like I said, it was more, you know, I was looking at the pedigrees, I was looking at the strike rates of the yards. The, the, the yard are in fantastic form. They've had, uh, I think it was it three or four winners in the past couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, he's going from, well, yeah. Was it, uh, in fact, I take that back, six from 26, a 23% strike rate. Um, I just thought, you, you, you're you essentially guessing, aren't you, for the, for the sure. short short Yeah, you are. So, That's why yeah. I put up Raceford, but with not, not much confidence. I, mean, I didn't well, get I'm much stable confidence. Just laid Raceford, as I guess. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> one, of us will be, one of us will be right, Kiel. As soon as you tipped him. <laughs> I have to say, yeah, I, I can and, occasionally and get that a little bit of I'm say pointers some towards the yard. Ross and have a tiny, tiny little bit on Storm Dennis. I was surprised at Earl oh. Biffy Biffen. 
was as big as he was for man of the moment Dave Bass on a hat trick and Ben Pauling. Ben Pauling. Uh, it was on, one of the favourites last night, was it not? It was. It yeah, says it was no one love one. for it whatsoever. But Ben Pauling, especially in these colours, he likes to. He targets his bump horses. Ben Pauling, of course, a graduate from Nicky Henderson's, who was assistant there, and he does take a good one to Ascot. So I was surprised that I'll just be watching this race like a lot of you will. The Lost in Translation colours are also advertised with no hubs, no hoops. Yeah, Jeez. absolutely. Yeah, again, but not they're, they're not really a yard you associate with with first time like bumper winners are. That um, I, I thought was interesting about this race as well is you know you were saying about the, the Pauling horse, but also potentially Hamilton's fantasy. You've got some nicely bred four year olds here. The Queen's horse. horses. Mm. Yeah, oh, this, is a, this has been a good bumper down the years. I mean, I was yeah. saw in Glory won it last year. Yeah. Sugar um, Baron won it a few years ago. Josses Hill has won it. Josses Hill. Yeah. You know, so you know, so did some decent horses tend to run in it, and, and it looks like we've got a well contested field. What about Candu Kid? Sorry, what, uh, what about Candu yep. Kid for the uh, for Paul Nichols? We said he's having a great time at Harry Cobden on a wind operation and tongue tie prior to debut. Uh, yeah, he gives so many of his horses wind operations in the close season, doesn't he? I don't think that's much of a surprise. Yeah. Um, the, the sire has got a very good record in soft ground in bumpers, though. So again, conditions that's better, are spot than, on. Uh, that's better than Nichols' record. Then he's three from twenty in the past ten years here in bumpers. But we're off and running, and Phil York. Uh, the, vent, the journeyman point jockey, I think, as I know. I've seen him in many point-to-point fields. Old Yorkie, absolutely fearless, and he's gone straight to the front uh, on his outsider. Of course, eighth on his debut, Mount Corbett, setting the, a fair pace for a bumper kills. Uh, yeah, well, sometimes they're still walking once the flag goes That's up, what I mean. So, yeah, reasonable. Um, yeah, it, 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 this horse is almost running away with him. Um, he won't be finishing... Uh, in that position when they go next time round <laughs> the way the way it looks for old Biffy Biffin's uh, got a nice sit as well uh, race for out the he back has, uh, another outsider up front but you know they're all just you know actually for a group of bumpers they're all settling reasonably well given they're not going that fast yeah okay where's this gamble then Ross Bradley Wonderwall gamble outside well, yeah Wonderwall is on the uh, the wide outside number eleven uh, for Richard Spencer uh, like you said uh, most of them have settled tucked away in the uh, the mid pack we've got uh, Hamilton's Fantasy Outlast already being uh, scrubbed along is no hubs no hoobs so that one uh, already um, thinking about its future as a as a three mile chaser I'm sure uh, but this one's gone, <laughs> gone this absolutely is right. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. it was in danger. Danger. tell you it, it was in not danger easy doing to that, run away it? with Phil York he's a, he's been around a long long time he's got no, strong there's, there is, there, there's not a horse, there's not a man that can hold a horse if it decides it wants to go and that's exactly what's happened here yeah okay so we've got a runaway leader uh, they're ignoring it Alan Conway in the run <laughs> 29 currently on the, the, the back well, exchange. So. Wait a minute, it's a bend. 29. <laughs> 29. Paul Keeney thinks he should have another zero next yeah. to that. It yeah. looks like the, the, the Tizard also was easy to back. No, Abner Hubes looks beaten. Uh, looking for a couple in the run. Wonderwall's just, yeah, he's close enough, isn't he? The, uh, the gamble, I think. Just looking for the Queen's horse. That's making a move at the minute. That's Hamilton's fancy. Jeremiah McGuire, big price for uh, a Hendo horse indeed. What's this just in third or fourth there, I can see? Well, this can-do kid on the inside and then Entre Deur, I think, on the outside of him. The Denon Bandit for Stuart Kittow. Yeah, the, the big, I mean, the big question here that jockeys have got, this horse has gone uh, scything off in front, is at what point do they try and, <laughs> <laughs> try and get involved in the race? Because <laughs> what's going on here? But Phil York's had figures. a good look behind him. He's like, lads, where are you? Well, he, he just went single figures in, on, in the really? run for a Did second. he really? <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable oh, yeah, scenes. Alan Conway, he, tell us about this. So this should sure, be surely This should be eight hundred to one, shouldn't it? What price is it, this leader? Thirty well, thirty four and now just gone fifty and back into thirty six. So even the punters don't know what's money. He was two hundred and sixty eight but for SP, I think. As I say, there's some people have uh, already traded out and made it a profit anyway. I'll tell you what's yeah, catching my eye. On trade for James now. Best and Paul Henderson. Now. That's interesting because we are approaching the business end. A couple of these looking a bit green and a bit outpaced. And the front runner, Phil York's like, come on, lads, do me a favour. I'm going to stay out your way into the home bed because I'm falling on absolute empty gas here. Yeah, and he has absolutely wall has gone. come back on the bridle, having looked like it wasn't going that well. Yeah, Raysford is there as well. What will he find? Yeah, also, Raysford, yeah, travelling well, as is uh, Hamilton's fantasy. The I other, thought Raysford was just source. starting to come under it. Can do kid looking like he's got a chance as well. They fan out. Call it, please, Ross Briley. Uh, in front, we've got Can do kid coming through on the far side as well. Storm Dennis for Chris Gordon down this near side. The gamble on Wonder Wall. Uh, the, uh, the the Queen's horse, Hamilton's fantasy in there as well. Hamilton's fantasy from Can do kid. Top down of the bills running well. Wonder Wall is down 
down this near side rail. It's a three-way go with Hamilton's Fantasy on the far side. Can do kid between the two. Uh, Wonderwall down this near side it? as well. Hamilton's Fantasy and Wonderwall. Wonderwall and Hamilton's Fantasy. This near side rail is usually the place to be. Hamilton's Fantasy yeah, from Wonderwall. Wonderwall is getting, getting up to score for James Bowen and Richard Spencer. Wonderwall oh. beats Hamilton's Fantasy to second and running on from nowhere into third was top of the bill. Yes, indeed. Interesting. They sorted themselves out off the home turn. Funny race to watch, wasn't it? Race for did him need, did need it. You got the place lay there. Yeah, it was, it was buttons for a bit of fun. Um, purely because you said you fancied it. It's been no, that well, sort of day. <laughs> Two came clear towards the finish, didn't we? We always just looked like he was going to get up Wonderwall, didn't we? Uh, you tend, you tempted to look at these colours, aren't you, Keels? Uh, the Rebel Racing, they name all their horses after songs as well with the music mm. association record label. Yeah, exactly. Right, yeah, they, they have flat horses. They won the Coventry with Registry. But he's by years. Yates, isn't he? So. Yeah, yeah, he's by Yates. He's certainly bred to stay. He does stay for, for, for sure. Um, Hamilton's fancy's run a blinder for Her Majesty. It mm. might be a, it might be a nice bumper. Your one ran quite well actually, was didn't it? Yeah, he did on the Davis, inside. Yeah. yeah, I mean, again, like I said, the, the yard are in pretty good nick, and you know the, 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 the yards that train the horses in front of him are uh, significantly uh, but, sexier uh, than Chris Gordon. No, it's no funny how to. money speaks in this race because last year there was a massive word for soaring glory, mm. uh, and he came here and he and he won it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and again here. Yeah, Jossie's Hills and Odds On Shot when it yeah. won Crick Rock. Do you remember when that run uh, uh, won it, of course? Hazard landed a gamble two years ago for Tom Lacey as well. Did you like anything in the bumper there? Did you get with a gamble? Loads of people out there would have done. Money talks, as Kills said. Absolutely. Well, we've been doing a lot of talking. It's been a fun day, gentlemen, hasn't it? Paul Keeley banged in a couple of winners. Banged in a couple of winners. Nicked a few quid. Um, nothing to write home about, certainly. Um so he won't be retiring, um, but uh, yeah, but it was a nice day. But Imperial all right, we'll look out in the members yeah, section. Yeah, hopefully you know, Kim will he tell us where he's good. going. He looked very good. He really did, didn't he? We weren't sure about the quality of the field coming into it, but we certainly got a star out of it. Ross Briley, good to have you back on the panel. Yeah, good to be back. Good to be out of the house. Good to be out of the north for a bit, you know, mix it up a little bit. Walk through the deserted streets of London. Quiet train back, carriage to yourself. Oh, I might change carries every 10 minutes, mix it up, you know, really. <laughs> First really class pop up. Perhaps I might drive it, who knows? Well, yes, OK. Uh, let's oh, please get a ticket. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Conway, right. great to have you back. Alan, you can tell you enjoy these shows. Yeah, it's brilliant, Dave. Thanks for having me. Another another great great weekend and a good start to our, our three weeks of Bepper sponsored Grade One action. So looking forward to the the fight in fifth next week and then onto the Tingle Creek at Sandown. Oh yeah, he's just served it up beautifully. We're with you pretty much every weekend now till Christmas and indeed New Year as well. That's it for myself, Dave Orton. Gents, happy days. Thanks a lot. We'll see you. Kills, you've got a couple of weeks I've off now. I've got a couple of weeks off, yes. I've got the delights of more decorating. Is that right? That went terribly, didn't it, in lockdown? It goes terribly because I'm absolutely useless <laughs> at it. Right? You know, I, I, I've had to use up some holidays, so I thought, well, I might as well do a bit. Well, thanks for coming in, Kills. We've really enjoyed it. We'll see you no again problem. in December. Ross Bradley, I'll see you next Saturday. You will indeed, Along yeah. With I'm just going to stay in here for the week. Is that <laughs> right? You might right, Mel, do. Yeah, <laughs> OK, fair enough. Thanks to the guys in the gallery, the Lee brothers there, the Millwall boys, keeping you going all the way. Thank you to watching as well. Well, we'll see you next weekend. It's just a Ladbrokes trophy. What another weekend at Newbury will have. Until then, enjoy the sport.